ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome to episode 126 of the It's Obvious Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Preston Pugh, and I'm joined by my two best friends, Garrett Drake. Hey, dudes. How's it going? And Jacob Baca. Hey, dudes. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Well. Excellent. How are you doing? All three of us are doing excellent today. We are. Yeah. Sounds good. It's a beautiful day. It is nice. It's very nice. I've loved this week weather-wise. It's been wonderful. Just amazing. Monday, it was extremely cold, but it's kind of evened out to where it's in the like low 50s, high 40s in the morning. So, mm-hmm. perfect like jacket weather. I'm it's enjoying like it. It's like 70 time. during the day. It's fantastic. Some days. Today, it is. Most day it has been. I remember, uh, earlier this week, it was around like in the 50s, I think. Okay. So, which it's is all good my regardless. favorite type of weather. Oh, you yeah. like 50s? Oh, yeah. It's a little just too, wear too a, a little chipper for me. I like that. I like wearing just a very, I don't mind very 50s. Anything jacket. below that, though, is pushing it. See, I like, I like weather where I can wear a short sleeve shirt and a pair of jeans. That's you can do that weather. in the 50s. Yeah, but it's a little brisk. You're not like completely comfortable. I feel like 60s where, mm. you know, you're in the perfect I really like 40s. My favorite. Is, I 40s. love wearing a, a hoodie that's just really nice and cozy and then like just a pair of jeans i think 40s is perfect weather for very that. interesting so. i know you're like him right you mm, like uh, no i mean I'll, i can deal with the winter weather for about two weeks and then i'm over it mm-hmm. but i enjoy those two weeks but after those two weeks pass i'm like all right it's time for spring again see i'm <laughs> i'd much rather it be cold than just insanely hot mm-hmm. okay so yeah. i always say you can put more layers on but yeah. you can't you can't just strip butt naked if it's too I hot. I can shed skin. I wish okay. it could be 70 degrees flat year round, personally. That, between 68 and 70 year round, that'd be flawless for me. Well, we, we get a, a, several months that are like that here, so it's nice. We do. It is. Well, how's your week been disregarding the weather? Um, it was great. I passed my test, thankfully. Nice. nice. Congrats. Thank you. Appreciate it, boys. Uh, that. that was the part one part two is uh i hear even more difficult that's at the end of the quarter that's in three weeks we have to blow through an entire another book before we get there the sequel huh yeah it is truly the sequel so that will be uh the true victory but uh part one is complete which is good part three like finish the fight (laughs) sort of it's it's similar to pro tools where there's multiple tiers we're testing to be user certified and then there's something else and then there's instructor certified like pro tools it's user operator and then expert i'm an i'm an operator for pro tools and then for media composer it's similar things as three tiers but uh always for like expert for pro tools and uh instructor for media composer you basically have to know the history of the software like the company and you have to know what versions work on which uh operating systems of different versions of computers and stuff and it's like so in depth it's mostly meant for people that intend on teaching the software to others so if i could i I might eventually try to reach reach middle tier but uh just starting out at users works for me it's been brutal but uh it's the most studying i've done in a very long time i don't think i've studied that hard since i don't even think i studied that hard in high school honestly it's probably the hardest i've ever studied for something so good times Maybe in music school, but it was a good week. That's all I really had going on is that consumed my entire week. Nice. Other than like dabbling in Mario here and there. Nice. So yeah. Very nice. Jacob, what about you? You take any crazy tests or anything? No, thankfully not. Uh, Hopefully I don't have to take any tests in a while. It's just not a good test taker overall. I hear you. Uh, I guess I'm not a good studier either. I mean, I've always studied by myself, so maybe I should like study with other people. Maybe that would See, I can't do that. Yeah. Okay, people are like, you want to do a study group? I'm like, no, you just distract no, me. Leave me alone. <laughs> so I have to do my own thing. Mm. I mean, all I do is, is I just you read You have like it. your own techniques that you do? Not really. I don't do anything like flashcards or anything. I just look I at the that. notes I have and just read it over and over and over and over. And practically mm. to where I'm like memorizing a script for a movie and then I just recite that script on the test Mm. and most tests i do forget it yeah most that's the thing that's different about doing it for a software is that it's all hands-on so when i'm using the software i remember it because i'm constantly using it and eventually it becomes to a point where what i do and say pro tools i couldn't even describe to someone how i did what i did because it's all muscle memory it's all Mm -hmm. like keyboard shortcuts and stuff so eventually it just kind of bleeds into your hands and your your hands remember everything for you yeah but with let's say like a history test or a math test i will study something and as soon as I apply it to the test and leave the room, it, it's gone forever. Yeah. I don't remember a single thing I studied. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's because I, it's like it's literally like studying a script and then reciting it and that's then how forgetting you get about high school. it. That's exactly what I did through high school. So yeah. that's why I don't remember a lot of things I learned in high school. Gotcha. 
So, but uh, no, I did not take any tests this week, Preston. I worked a ton. I think I almost went overtime, which is no, I did go overtime, which was nice. Mm. Um, but besides that, I've been playing a few games. Um, but before we get into that, what did, did you do anything exciting this week, Preston? No, anything at all? You've been in Brownsbridge all week. Yeah, it's so nice. weird how close we've been all week. Well, arguably not. I'm, I'm in Atlanta I'm almost every day, yeah. but mm-hmm. the fact that I sleep here at night and you were not too far, just a few hours before I got yeah. home. Yeah, so it's kind of really, sad. Really gets nice. you tingly inside, right? Yeah, it gets me really you can excited. Feel my presence. Oh, I could. Here. I can always feel your presence when you're near. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, I've been there all week. That's cool. all I did this week. What did you guys play this week? Oh man, I beat Wolfenstein this week. Wolfenstein. So I really wanted to finish that before Call of Duty came out. So I think on Wednesday or Thursday, I had one or two missions left. So you're just doubling so, up on that that Nazi, the Nazi, Nazi killing. Yeah, yeah. just. Uh, I would like to see how many men I've slaughtered um, from between those <laughs> the two past games. couple weeks. I'm sure it's just just an insane amount. But uh, Wolfenstein's absolutely fantastic. Um, one of the craziest games I've ever played. There's a something so insane happens halfway through that game that it just like blew my mind. I don't think I could have come up with what they do just ever i feel like they were just i don't know what drugs they were on (laughs) but there's just uh an entire sequence through the middle that is just insane and it just fits the entire tone of that world so so freaking good would you say this is like the wackiest game they've made just in in terms terms of of craziness like just what you're speaking of yeah this developer yeah or just but that oh uh you mean the publisher yeah the publisher don't, want to, don't want to get these people riled, riled up, up. So like i can't think of another <laughs> that's game. just the publisher I mean, maybe fallout sometimes is a little no this wacky, is but... no this is in, this is way wackier yeah this is absolutely insane yeah, i'm just trying to get i haven't <laughs> i haven't really looked too much into like yeah, no, stuff, the entire but... story is batshit crazy mm-hmm. and i love it for that okay. it's it's so fun like um, way more than the first one yes okay it there are it take there are so many serious moments like even before the part i'm talking about like right before something incredibly serious and like emotionally it resonated with me um just not because I can relate to it, just because I've grown to care for this character and just what he's going through. Just I, I could, you know, it had an impact yeah. with me. Yeah. Um, so it'll have moments like that and then it'll just go insane. So, um, yeah, as far as, you know, the story goes, it's it's really, really, really great and solid and crazy. Um, it ends kind of on a. It ends fine. Um, it's definitely they've already announced that they want this to be a trilogy, and it definitely ends with that in mind. So that's cool. Um, gameplay wise, amazing. Um, I had absolutely no you know technical hiccups or anything on my end. Um, the shooting felt incredible. I love dual wielding so much. I, I pretty much dual wielded the entire game, um, mainly with a shotgun in one hand and a rifle in the other. And uh, that was my favorite setup, and I just it was so fun just even using that. I love the you know the stealth segments and stuff. Um, I really like that system that they have, pretty much where you enter an area for the most part, ninety five percent of the time you can stealth it and take out these generals so reinforcements don't come. I just really like that um, little system that they have there. Uh, what else? There, my my one of my little gripes with the game is there there aren't as many weapons as i would have liked it's just you know an smg rifle shotgun pistol that's it Mm -hmm. you can pick up a few heavy weapons like a flame ball shooter or one of those laser cannons and towards the end there's like the bfg of wolfenstein which is some long german name but it pretty much is the bfg it shoots a big energy ball and sucks people into it Um, but besides that yeah, that's that's pretty much all the weapons. So it's not like disappointing, but I would have liked to have seen more weapons. Um, the problem I had last week in terms of the diversity of the environments, it does get better as time goes on. You're not constantly in this, you know, apocalyptic city, but you you do go through a lot of similar areas, like just bases that are metallic-y looking. Um, the most diverse place that you go 
is for one of the first missions you actually and this is in the trailers where do y'all remember the trailer where you go to the diner with the strawberry mm-hmm. milkshake yeah. you get to explore this old you know american town where there are nazi parades going on there are swastikas hanging everywhere it's so sh- like bright and sunny and you know ku klux klan members are walking around and you know parents with their kids are walking around like it's like a parade they're at and everybody you know there are people are you know there is a feeling of just like dread Mm -hmm. going around but it it looks so happy so it's just and of course there's nazis and ku klux klan members walking around so it's just insane looking but you only get to explore that for that mission Mm -hmm. that's it and it's it's not that big i i assumed it would be a big open hub area where I could branch off and do missions and stuff. So that was a little, do you have a shootout in those streets? No. Oh, cause I was going to say it'd be fun. You to can, just, there are girl, there's civilians out. <laughs> the whole point of that is you're trying to stay undercover. Mm-hmm. Um, which there's, there's two missions like that. The, the, the next undercover mission, I'm not going to do any spoilers at all, but it is probably my favorite mission in the game because it is so hilarious and awesome. Mm-hmm. But, um, you can, whenever you kill a captain in this game, they drop a Enigma code and you eventually unlock a console where you can go to this computer and decrypt the codes and it'll reveal the locations of these like Uber commander agents and you can go back to districts that you have previously been to and this area is one of those districts so you can go back to it but it's at night Mm -hmm. and do a mission where you have to hunt down a nazi soldier so you can do a firefight in that area but it's not with all the civilians around or anything so but that is that's a new kind of side mission system that they have going to where for every captain you get a code you need a certain amount of codes to reveal the location of a captain you go to a area you've previously been to you can kill that captain and you get a death card and i'm not exactly sure what the death cards do i might be having a brain fart but um there are three superpowers that you can have in the game and they give you a choice of which one you want but I've unlocked two by doing these missions, and I'm assuming you can unlock the third one by completing these missions as well. So there definitely is reason to do these because they make you powerful. And these superpowers are, they're different and really awesome. One of them is like you're a ram, and anytime you sprint, you don't have to push a button or anything, but if you just sprint, you can run through these these certain walls, you can run through crates, and you can run into people. And if they're already injured, you can just run through people, and they'll just explode into like a million pieces. <laughs> it is so satisfying. Mm-hmm. Um, also, do you know in the time you played those big soldiers that'll like rocket towards you? Yes. If you run at them while they do that, you can knock them back. Oh, and that's I think awesome. Automatically kill them. That's cool. So it's really cool. The, the next upgrade is like a constrictor harness where uh, this sounds insane but if there's like a tube you can fit in the tube and like crawl up the tube like a hamster weird and pop out somewhere so it's, that's mainly for stealth mm-hmm. you can also get underneath things really easily um like really small crevices you can get underneath there um and the next one which i haven't unlocked yet is a battle walker and it allows you to reach really high places and i think you can do a specific takedown with it but you're you're able to jump right super high nice so those are the three powers you get to pick one which every level has different opportunities for these particular powers so that promotes replayability and depending on the decision you make at the beginning i believe you start off with a different weapon as well um there's two power weapons and if you're running around the game and there's a refuel station for your particular weapon but you see another one that's a different color i'm assuming that's for the other weapon because one runs on diesel and i believe the Mm. other one runs on some type of blue material so do you always have these power weapons you just don't always have ammo or fuel. yeah yeah you do but the fuel is there are stations okay. everywhere i honestly didn't use that weapon a lot um, so what kind of scenario would which one did you have i had one where you would shoot a little bomb at something and then you would hit the right mouse click to detonate it okay it would allow me to blow up like some doors enemies. that asked for it or or that okay. i i would remember i had it and would use it on a few bosses i fought and and it helped but i honestly was just my shotgun rifle combo was so good. I was just using that pretty much the entire time. Um, 
except when I was stealthing, I would use my silence pistol and I would mm-hmm. headshot guys to sneak around easier. But um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm missing. Uh, I don't. I just don't want to spoil anything. But um, it's it's excellent. Machine Games is killing it. I cannot wait for the next one. So five out of ten from you. Five out of ten for yeah. sure. <laughs> if I definitely had to rank this, I would I would give it top top score. I cool. loved pretty much you know every second of it for the most part. Yes, um, I'm very excited to get back to it. Yeah, it's great. I look forward to hearing what you think about all this crazy stuff, mm-hmm. particularly in the middle and the ending. So, anyways, I, so I played that. I played a little bit more of Assassin's Creed Origins. And I really like that game. It's very fun. Mm-hmm. Just solid. Um, I like the stealth way more than I thought I would. And it is required in a lot of situations. Um, I I just got the Hidden Blade about an hour or two ago. Okay, I just got it too. Okay. And uh, one of the... They gave you two assassination missions after that. Mm-hmm. One takes you to a bathhouse, mm-hmm. which I thought was cool. Um, it kind of shows how you lose your finger to the hidden blade and why in the first Assassin's Creed game they require you to cut yeah. your finger off so they kind of address that and the second mission where you go to assassinate somebody else I got caught the first time and was completely overrun so I had to play it again and be extremely stealthy this time which I liked because um, it is very easy to get outnumbered in that game especially if you're around the same level or if you're under leveled and you can get taken out fairly quickly mm-hmm. so that is cool that stealth is kind of incentivized with that I'm still not the biggest fan of the animations of the killing it was a, like when i assassinated the guy in the bathhouse i dropped down on him and his like body shifted to the left and yeah. went through a wall i was like oh this is supposed to be a cool moment in the just jankiness mm-hmm. of the animation of this game messed it up i launched a uh, horse with a power attack like halfway across the football field <laughs> last night I, I actually had to do a video for cog for like top five tips for assassin's creed mm-hmm. and the opening clip is me using my power ability or i run up to a guy in a horse and i just smack the shit out of it dude like <laughs> just flies down the field oh, and it's funny too because i walk up to the horse he's all like miscombobulated and stretched out <laughs> and i'm looking at it and this little kid runs up he's like bah, 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 bah. he's like saying something i couldn't understand what he was saying and he's like looking at the horse and i just like smack him with my dagger and he's like ah! <laughs> like run, stop. you can hit children in the game really? which is so bad yeah. i was just i was curious i was like man yeah. if i can launch a horse across a football field i wonder if i can smack this kid. Just, yeah. the opening should have just been you hitting the kid <laughs> yeah it's a combination because i hit the kid and he like runs off around a corner screaming and i just walk away mm-hmm. it's so funny <laughs> But uh, I'm enjoying it as well. I've barely played it, like you said. I mean, I just got the Hidden Blade. I've done the Assassination uh, uh, 8 or okay. 9. I'm 12 or... No, I just got the 13. Right. I know I'm supposed to be at least 10 when you meet Aya and you get your Hidden Blade, which uh, the only reason I went there is because I wanted like a different setting for the video I was doing. So I'm going to go back and do some side quests before I Alexandria. continue with those. Yeah, it's a beautiful I, that's city. a really cool city. It is. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole... I mean, Egypt in itself, I've hardly explored it, but everything I've seen already, I'm like, this is amazing how vast mm-hmm. and awesome it looks and all the varying uh places there are whether it be like the hippopotamus <laughs> lake or whatever it was and uh alexandria and even siwa looks different from that so and i love being like in the dunes just like mm-hmm. the sand dunes out there in like the open field it looks awesome yeah. so it's cool i'm excited to get back to that as well i think i'm gonna which we'll talk about soon i've already beaten call of duty so i think i'll go and beat wolfenstein and then work on assassin's creed going into christmas in addition to playing mario so yeah that's that's kind of my plan right now i want to finish up call of duty and when battlefront comes out of course i'll probably play through that as oh well. yeah i totally forgot that's out in uh, another week right? yeah i think so. so but assassin's creed is a great game to play alongside mario are we talking about the changes to the loot boxes that ea announced or the star cards i've heard i've called, heard i've read so many different things that i didn't really know if they've made multiple updates or just one big update i think they, they said that they're reducing the star card drops or something in the loot boxes or removing right, them yeah. entirely I think or they're something moving away the epic that's what it was yeah something, something like that, that. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can only get them in game now which right is, mm-hmm. i think a lot of people are happy about that mm-hmm. yeah yeah, I mean, I think I think it was funny too the the response I saw in whatever video or article I read. Comments were like, "Wow, EA's actually listening to us for once." I read that. I was, I read. Oh, it's, it's still not enough. Right, I, I read that out. too. But yeah. there was there was a handful of people that were like, "Wow, I never thought EA would actually make even if it's minor like a change at all." Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's cool. But yeah, or, I'm I'm enjoying Origins a lot. I really like the parkour system too. I find myself not even using my camel a lot. I'm mm-hmm. just climbing and jumping around stuff, and I like Aya too. She's, She's really- She's a cool, cool character. Yeah, I like their her introduction. relationship with each other. Is um, it is cool. 
Yeah, I reason. think what I'm most excited about is to, to see how Assassin, like the actual Creed begins. Yeah, I really hope they explain how the Hidden Blade came about. Yeah, instead of just like, this is some old design like, we found. Cleopatra gave this to me. Here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe that's a, a hint, like maybe we'll go to that area. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm assuming they'll elaborate on how this, you know, I'm, I'm assuming it has something to do with like the original civilization or something. Right. You know, came up with the Hidden Blade or whatever. But, uh, but yeah, I don't have anything really else to say. It is fun. I did just figure out that I believe I was wrong last week when I said you could get armor as loot. You don't. You just upgrade the armor that you have. So what, what do you mean? You, If you look at your bracers and yeah. your chest piece mm-hmm. and your hidden blade, it has like little squares next to it. Okay. And the only way to upgrade it to the next level is to hunt. So you don't actually get a new chest piece or a new bracer. Okay, I see. You just level them up. Now, the do they change in appearance? or this They is just... do change in the appearance okay, that's as cool. you level them up. Because so, I know the hidden blade, I think the final version I've seen of it has like, the it's like split in two. Yeah. And it looks yeah. awesome. When I, when I remember seeing that promotional image yeah. of him having that and then when they gave it to you, it just looked like a regular mm-hmm. one. So I was like, what the heck? That's cool. But yeah, so that is a little, it's whatever to me. I was just hoping that I was going to be getting new, you know, actual pieces totally. of armor as yeah. well too. I wish the outfit, I mean, I like the fact that there's a lot of outfits in the game, but I, I still wish they were, they went all in on the RPG element of the game and just, they all did different things. Like if you want to be stealthy or wear this or maybe mix and match items as well. I agree. But oh, crap. It, it, I still appreciate it for what Horizon it is. Horizon DLCs next week. I forgot. About is that. it already? Mm, yeah. Man, it's never ending. I know. Dude. <laughs> I'm gonna put that over Assassin's Creed until I beat that. Yeah, I gotta be. I'm gonna have to do that too. I'm yeah. so excited to get back to that game. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about Origins. I played Mario mm-hmm. a lot more than I did the first. You know, week it came out, and I love that game. It's so happy and fun. It is. New Dark City is amazing it's funny because new donk city was the one i was least excited about same here and then once you're in there i'm like this is awesome (laughs) i love it man so good yeah that's i don't even everybody said everything about mario and i just have to agree with all the i know i'm just thinking about it now i'm like smiling (laughs) thinking about i want to play it so bad (laughs) it's funny because yesterday i was in the middle of call of duty and uh, i was like well i've got to dump my brains out so i went to the bathroom with mario naturally and started playing i was like man i've still not played this game on the big screen for more than about 10 seconds i'm like i'm just gonna play it for five minutes on the big screen so i pop it into its dock and i played for like a full hour i was like i need to stop i need to get back to call of duty (laughs) i was like i need to stop i played for a full hour and it feels really good on the tv and i was wondering why i've yet to do this in the comfort of my own home but i've won i wondered why it packs they're like we're gonna have you play a split joy con so it's like oh that's kind of annoying but for the motion control yeah and i've realized and other people have said this too and after the more the more i've played the game the more i've realized it would be so much i wouldn't say easier but in some some cases more convenient to have split joy cons as far as the motion controls like you yeah. said mm-hmm. but it's not that big of a deal i still prefer using the pro, pro controller yeah. as much as i can but Overall, man, so good. Yeah, it is amazing. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the second half of the game that everybody's talking about so much. As am I. How yeah. there's just so many surprises. So that's what is making me even more excited mm-hmm. you know, than I already am just about playing it. Yeah, I get to... So, uh... Uh, have the the switch fulfill its true potential yet again like i did with zelda previously uh, mm-hmm. flying to wherever i was flying not too long ago but i'm going back to seattle this thursday for obvious reasons again <laughs> but uh, <laughs> i get to take mario with me this time so i'm very excited to play that on the go yeah that's gonna be awesome it's gonna be very cool another destiny thing no oh. <laughs> yes it, it is but, oh is it really uh, it is yeah. i was just joking no it's always destiny when i go to Seattle, <laughs> except for pax it's always destiny oh, i was so. like the game's out yeah Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. I got you. Well, I, I don't know if it's confidential or not, but it's obvious that it's for DLC. So I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but yeah, you well, just did. I don't. I don't think the email did said you confidential. Sign you signed NDA? Not yet. Okay. You don't sign until you get there. Good. This is all speculation. Yeah, I'm just. You don't even I'm know just, what you're I'm talking just about. Imagining you're, I'm going there. You're for drunk that. right now. No, very excited to go back though. Anytime I can go to Bungie, it's been cool. It's crazy to think at the end of the end of this year, I'll, I'll be able to say I've been to Bungie three times this year. <laughs> That's just <laughs> weird. <laughs> Seattle four times. So nice. It's a cool city. Very Maybe cool. I'll run into Jeremy Jones. He's back in Seattle now. Oh yeah, yeah. It's cool. He, he was previously in LA because he moved there briefly to do stuff with Collider Video, and then he resigned, and now he's back in Seattle. I didn't know he was from Seattle. Gotcha. Excellent. Um, then I played Call of Duty, which came out yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, Man, crazy. Did you get early? 
No, I did not. You didn't? Mm. Just yesterday? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, all I've played is campaign. I started up multiplayer because I wanted to run around the hub area, but it wouldn't let me, I think, until I played a match. Or I just couldn't figure out how to get to it. But uh, besides that very short thing, I played, I would say, 80% of the campaign based on the mission I'm at, like I told you. I have a feeling I'm at towards the end. But um, I do want to say right off the bat, and I think you would agree with me, this game is not bad. It's not bad? It's not bad. No, yeah. Let's... uh let's let's start from the top here okay yeah, by saying it's definitely not bad yeah, i think because i know we're probably going to say a lot of negative things, we will but it's not bad right i think <laughs> overall it is solid yeah. like it's it's a really good call of duty game i will say but it's that's its peak is that it's a really good call of duty game it never goes beyond that like mm-hmm. infinite warfare just to briefly touch on that as far as the storytelling in that game is concerned and the structure of its campaign, that rose above traditional Call of Duty for me. Yeah. And then you come back to Sledgehammer, it's just down a few notches, which is fine. It's still really fun. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's start with campaign and specifically, I guess, just gameplay. We'll start with gameplay first because I know we can talk about story and characters as well. But mm-hmm. let's start with gameplay. How are you feeling about gameplay in Call of Duty World War II? I mean, it's Call of Duty. Yeah, it's pretty mm-hmm. typical Call of Duty. It's typical Call of Duty. They tried to spice it up a little bit with the health system yeah. and the squad mate system, and mm-hmm. I honestly think that it was just unnecessary. It, it wasn't necessary. It doesn't bring <laughs> anything. It yeah, did I, not. I kind of like the health system, but I felt like the the ammo guy was kind of unnecessary. I, don't I thought know. all then, of like, it. Was I thought the whole mechanic of calling for those things were was yeah. unnecessary. The health is dumb. I'm playing on veteran. I mm-hmm. always play Call of Duty. Okay, I was going to ask. I was yeah. wondering if those things make a difference on veteran. No. Okay. No. The thing with veteran is is this is the worst Call of Duty to play on Veteran that I've played since World of War. Is it just because it's ridiculous? It is ridiculously cheap. Okay. You there are, the the health system is pretty annoying because you take one shot and your health's already down, so you're yeah. using the health pit like constantly. It's constantly. You run out quickly. You you run out quickly, but I mean I've I almost pretty much beat the entire game in one sitting last night on Veteran, so it's not even close to like World at War levels of mm-hmm. cheapness. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely the hardest veteran campaign I've played since then, primarily due to some things I f- that I feel are kind of cheap. You will get one-shotted out of nowhere consistently, and it's extremely aggravating. Whereas Infinite Warfare, for instance, it was very fair on veteran. It wasn't by no means easy, but you had ch- a chance to at least take cover and understand what's going on when you're being hit. Whereas this game is you will walk two feet and just hit the ground, Mm -hmm. restart, just edge your head up, sniper kills Mm -hmm. you. Very annoying. Not like I said, not impossible, but it's just i'm playing the game like i'm on eggshells i'm just like tilting yeah. on every corner <laughs> which is like realistic mm-hmm. but it just feels unfair kind of you just die okay. so fast but um i just yeah i just feel like the health system is a little it's just an, an annoying i guess it just feels unnecessary i do think really. it's funny every five seconds Daniels, your ammo's ready. Daniels, I got health kits. Yeah. Daniels, your ammo's ready. Daniels, your ammo. I'm like, shut up. I was like, if I need ammo, I'll grab it. Like, I don't mind them saying it once, like when they charge up, but yeah, when they yeah. repeat it over and over again, I'm like, dude, I'm trying to shoot people here. It's so mm-hmm. annoying. But I will say, I am very impressed that no matter where, I mean, you have to be in their general vicinity, but no matter where you're standing, it al- almost always looks very natural when they toss, yeah, when it, they to toss you. it to yeah. you. I'm like, I can appreciate how good it looks and feels when they toss it to you, but that is so funny how they just go on and on about they're ready to give you stuff. But I appreciate the help, but I don't always need it. Yeah. So uh, I think the most pointless, I'm trying to think the most pointless one, prob- probably the ammo one, because I constantly came across ammo boxes. Yeah. I rarely yeah. called for ammo. All I've unlocked so far is the health and the ammo, so... Mm-hmm. I didn't know there. I mean, health health is definitely the most handy. There's a mortar that you can throw. There is a scout, Mm -hmm. which will identify some enemies. Oh wait, yeah, and it gives you the ability to slow down time. I appreciate that one. On the sites, that one's fine. Mm -hmm. But it just, in terms of the health system, I ignored pretty much all the. I mean, if you're gonna give me a free mortar to throw, I'll take it. Sure. So that's not that big of a deal. But primarily, the health system is the one that I kind of have the most gripe about i mean i, I will know. say i appreciate them trying something new yeah but i don't think it was necessary either no. it doesn't add anything no it doesn't cool. i guess mm, it makes so. it a more realistic option 
Stuff. That's the thing, and, and especially in higher difficulties, you die so fast anyways that pretty much if I got shot and was low on health packs, I would just restart the checkpoint anyways. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of just dumb. Maybe the I mean. sweet spot would be on, uh, I think it's called hard. What, what is it called? Regular? Regular, regular hardened veteran. Okay, I, I feel like hardened maybe would be the sweet spot for the health system. Yeah, maybe. Because on, on normal, I can get shot like 30 times and still... Yeah, I'm playing fine. on normal. I just wanted to bullet through it. Same with me. I was just worried. I just wanted to get to the story. I wasn't worried yeah. about challenge. I mean, I might go back and do veteran if I feel compelled to platinum the game at some point, which as of right oh, now, I don't. Platinum the game. There's, there's you have to play too. so many zombies. Things. Oh, it's the zombies. Yeah, I've yet to try zombies. I'm really excited to try it, though. Ever since zombie trophies were incorporated in Call of Duty, I haven't platinumed the game. Because I, I, I'm fine with zombies. I just... I don't want to play it for hours upon yeah. hours and getting all the secrets and doing all this crazy stuff within zombies. I think it, I think the only trophies for zombies should be like uh, make it to wave ten or something. Yeah, there there I I looked through them the other night and that's all crazy stuff. We, we should, should also argue that people that love zombies want those trophies to chore. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there are that, those out there fine. that appreciate them. Yeah, mm. uh, we should stream zombies uh, Monday or Tuesday night. I think it'd be fun. I just, I'm not a big horde mode guy. I don't really get into it that much. I, I mean, love zombies. Apparently, apparently the there's first couple times puzzles and stuff you have to complete along. I've heard the there way, are some cool so. Easter eggs for yeah. this one. Whoever wants to play with me. I'd love to stream I'll join that. You. There's okay. multiplayer trophies for, I think, the first time in a Call of Duty. It's like win 10 matches, oh, prestige a division. Cool. So, yeah. I remember... Sure this is the first time? I believe so. Hmm. I think... I remember back in the old Infinity Ward days, they addressed achievements in multiplayer saying that they didn't want players playing a weird or different way to mm -hmm. achieve achievements. And okay. I liked that. Pretty much every achievement had to do a single player yeah. in the old Call of Duties. So, well, gameplay wise in the campaign, it definitely had its moments for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like you said, normal Call of Duty, it really is just, oh, we're in an area shooting guys. We've killed them. Time to move on to the next area. Shoot those guys. I mean, that is That's every Call of Duty. Five missions. Yeah. Or four or five missions. Yeah, Every Call of Duty is basically that, but some do it better than others. And mm -hmm. I, I keep referring to Infinite Warfare. I think Infinite Warfare is still as of today my favorite call of duty campaign and, mm -hmm. and as far as call of duty campaigns are concerned as a whole world war ii isn't even in like my top three i don't think no but it, so it's very it's the most generic call of duty campaign mm -hmm. i've played in a long time it's almost like uh it reminds me i know this is a weird comparison it reminds me of force awakens from star wars because force awakens with it being like the return to like star wars like star wars is back it seems like it, they played it really safe as far as storytelling and characters and like a lot of people say like it really follows the formula of a new hope i feel like call of duty world war ii takes cues from obvious stuff like saving private ryan band of brothers uh fury more, more recently with like the tank stuff and then takes classic Call of Duty and just takes story cues from those movies and just splices them into World War II for like the safe groups and it makes uh, a boots on the ground it makes a less epic version it of does. those things mm -hmm. as well in particular D-Day was the what I was I was so you can go back to our old podcast the second we knew they were doing a World War II Call of Duty I was so excited to see d-day mm -hmm. and you know done with modern day gaming technology because the last and, we saw was frontline from medal yeah. of honor and i mean call of duty did too did a d-day thing but yeah. it was on i think it was on other, omaha beach it was yeah i was where you like climbing climb the big the wall yeah i mm -hmm. wasn't you know storming the beaches you know in the boat like saving private ryan and there was no sense of eeriness or dread that saving private ryan portrayed it, they weren't scared they weren't i mean he even says i'm not scared and he says you, you should, should be you should be <laughs> like you guys are on the front lines going up to death like certain death for, so the guys behind you can advance forward and mm -hmm. they're they don't it's like they don't even they're not even thinking like that i mean one could say like maybe they're trying to suppress their fear by like talking a lot and be like oh it's fine man it's totally fine yeah, but, but it, i just didn't get a like a feeling when i watch saving private ryan even now i get a like a feeling in the pit of my stomach a lot of that has to do with the direction scene. as well yeah and it just this wasn't done correctly the beach felt so small like it was just like a they took the beach and made it into a corridor mm -hmm. that was there was no fight up you know up with the to blow the barbed wire it was right. like 10 feet it, it did feel like, like 10 feet yeah i, was, I think uh, it would have been cool if they had a couple set piece moments spliced into that opening mission where you run to like a foxhole and you're in there and something yeah. crazy happens like all right we have to make it to the next foxhole we have to like take this strange detour to get there without getting shot to death yeah but even the when you it, they pull a stream uh scene straight out of saving private ryan where a guy's leg gets blown off mm -hmm. and you 
you're like all in a foggy like days you're like shell shocked yeah, yeah. yeah. and it, even that moment didn't it wasn't impactful it's funny because i had seen the mission before the game came out because i had to do video stuff for the game but when i saw it i was like that looks i think that looks really cool and then when you play it i was like no it, it looks just as like kind of blah as it is when you yeah. watch it but I, I won't even say it's bad it's just i think we had hyped it up so much in our heads that when you play it it's like that it wasn't what i was hoping it would be yeah so it's like i don't know it just felt so this is when i think of world war ii i think of d-day mm -hmm. like this is such a massive battle mm -hmm. and it seemed like it was nothing in this game yeah so i don't know um, I mean, the mission is, I thought it was fun when you get into the, the bunkers and stuff, fighting yeah. the Nazis. I mean, th those portions were pretty fun. Yeah, as I mean, far I as, as, far as storming them. the beach, that's like the most iconic part of that battle. Yeah. And that's what felt the shortest and weakest, mm -hmm. ironically. So, oh, well, man, it kind of bummed me out. But the rest of the campaign, I think standout missions for me, even though they were very simplistic for the most part, I liked the... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the stealth sequences, I should say. Yes. Um, a few of them were... Very simple, very basic. I mean, not even challenging in the slightest, but I did appreciate them being there. And I'm glad they made it there because there are quite a few stealth segments in this game. Mm -hmm. And I assumed it was going to be very, I'm going to hold your hand. Right. We're going to walk up to this guy, mm -hmm. push R3 to execute, yeah. walk up to this guy, do it. But it definitely opens up later on in the game where you can take your own paths yeah. and you actually have to figure out a way to sneak past these guys. Mm -hmm. So and we don't want to spoil it for anyone. because I do think the campaign's worth playing, even though we're like, oh, it's not a very good call yeah. the campaign. I still think it's worth experiencing, but I think the, the mission where you liberate Paris specifically, yes. we won't go into too much detail, but that's probably my favorite mission of the game. It's just the most unique out of all of them. Yeah, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. You... It reminds me of a lot of Medal of Honor missions where you go undercover, especially mm -hmm. in Frontline. I remember you going to like a Nazi stronghold with like your papers. You have to like th show them to people. That's what it reminded that's me of. That's what's unique is I know... It's not as complicated as this might make it out to be, but you actually have these papers that you have to read over. Yeah, and you memorize will be, it. You will be questioned by officers about yeah. who you are, and you have to answer correctly, or mm -hmm. else your cover will be blown. But it's like two choices. Yeah, it's so really easy. it's not it's not hard, but it's definitely cool. Yeah, um, I, I liked it. Yeah, that that mission was was definitely my favorite for mm -hmm. sure. But um, up until that point, it was it feels very much generic shooter mm -hmm. just missions involve you oh we got to take those aa guns we gotta yeah. protect gotta, these tanks uh, up the battle post up at the guard tower and snipe a bunch of guys exactly and hop into the jeep on the turret <laughs> yeah and then uh so. you do this mission and you know it, it breaks it up a little bit and then there's like a tank mission after that so i feel like up until that point it does the missions preceding that seem a little bit different mm -hmm. so different environments like you'll you'll be in the woods at one point i believe there's a snow mission as well i haven't gotten to that as well yeah but uh, up until that point it, it definitely mixes it up a little bit yeah i will say the settings change pretty frequently i mean d-day obviously is on the beach you go into the trenches I, I love fighting through uh france at the beginning and leading into paris those yeah. battles were fun and even battle of the bulge when you're in germany is a cool battle as well but i will say it was funny enough, the, the very ending felt very anticlimactic to me because I, 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 I assumed it was the end. But then when I beat it, it's like, oh, I guess that really was the end. It was a fun mission. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I was like, I was expecting a little more out of that final mission. But yeah. So the gameplay is fine. It's it's very mm -hmm. responsive and fast. Um, I know you didn't have any, but I had a few technical hiccups mm -hmm. with my game. The frame rate would have very fast stutters especially when i entered a new area and when a firefight first broke out so that was a little annoying at the beginning but you know i eventually got used to it um in terms of graphics it is very pretty oh it's, it's pretty gorgeous game. especially the uh the cinematic cutscenes yeah. when it when it cuts cuts away those are gorgeous yeah. even in you know in game with the characters yeah, they look good. faces mm -hmm. uh, in particular when it kind of goes into a in-game cutscene as the the uh, mission goes on they, mm -hmm. they look very nice the voice acting is really good too mm -hmm. um what was i gonna say oh yeah so gameplay's fine blah 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 um my biggest complaint with this game and i think the reason why i'm so feel so strongly about it is because of how much i loved infinite warfare's campaign how it was just seamless you do a mission you fly back to your spaceship you go to your quarters it never can, felt like there was any loading or breaking i mean exactly. there was but it was hidden very well and and 
it that was so different for a Call of Duty campaign because pretty much a Call of Duty camp, especially the older ones, is here's a mission briefing soap. You're gonna yeah. infiltrate this thing, do this thing, blah blah blah. All right, you beat it. Next loading screen. All right, mm-hmm. now we're doing this now. Whereas Inf- Infinite Warfare actually made me feel like I was this character and mm-hmm. I was. I had these squad mates and we were building a relationship together and we were doing this thing together. It didn't feel like I was just picking random mission here, random mission there. Man, the Nazis pushed forward through Arden Forest and it was pretty wild. But now we got to move on into Germany. Yeah. All right, let's go. Yeah, that's exactly (laughs) what this game is. It even kicks you you out to a free... It doesn't even just go. It Mm -hmm. kicks you out to a screen after every mission you beat. Mm -hmm. And then you select the next one. I'd have been fine if that mission popped up after you beat the game because obviously there's mementos to collect in every mission there's heroic acts to complete like mm-hmm. okay I've beaten the story now if I feel compelled to go back and now I can pull up the list and pick different missions and see what I need to get in each mission it's a lot but, like uh, Super Mario Odyssey's like level selection you know what I mean like when you're picking a mission in Call of Duty you like you're, you see like the air the progression arrow kind of going yeah and, yeah uh, I see Odyssey's what you mean. like you know the <laughs> map and stuff they probably stole it from that yeah they totally, yeah, totally stole it from Mario dude off. It is funny. Uh, we'll get to multiplayer in a bit. I was going to say how, how inspired it is from Destiny. I mean, it, obviously, Activision's the same publisher and everything, but it's funny how, how similar it is to Destiny and, like, the whole world. Yeah. But, uh, um, and just the, the they try and stir up this conflict between these two. Uh, ca- are they captains or sergeants? It was uh, or? the sergeant and the corporal, I believe. Yeah. And I just don't care. Or the lieutenant, sorry. Yeah. I yeah, just, I, I don't uh, care about it. The, the, the writing is just. It's it's just fine, I would say, because because Infinite Warfare I thought was so good. Like I really felt connected to those characters, mm-hmm. and I didn't. I mean, I enjoyed the. I characters remember in them, like II. Ethan and Salt. Yeah, I mean, those were the only two. But yeah. at least I remember them. <laughs> yeah, they were cool. They were cool characters. Um, but these guys, even though I think individually, I think the forgettable ones are the guy, the guy with the glasses, and the guy who gives you, I think, grenades or ammo. One of the two guys. Those two guys are like totally forgettable. But <laughs> I can't tell uh, you one of them. I, I know my Zussman is your main friend. He's, okay. the, he's the guy That's who gives him. you help. Yeah, Pearson yeah, yeah. is the douchebag okay, who's uh, yeah. from, from Transformers, okay. and then uh, I think camera isn't it's like I can't remember the the main guy's okay. name, like the lieutenant. I guy. just remember my own name because they screaming at me. Right, the Daniels. Time. Daniels, Red yeah. Daniels. But uh, yeah, the, the the conflict brewing. I could tell like what they were trying to do with it, but it just did not resonate with me either. I think Pearson's character was a little too douchey. Like his whole mm-hmm. bad attitude the whole time just like kind of annoyed me. <laughs> I was like, I like, get. They even acknowledged that at one part. Zussman's like, man, I could bring this guy Hitler's head, and yeah. he still would be a douche to me. Yeah. So. So I mean, I, I like the revelation. I mean, it was kind of obvious, but at the end of the game, where he uh, explains why he is the way he is, I'm like, still, I'm like. Get over it, man. I mean, I'm, I, I've never been in that situation of war or anything before, but I'm like, this is a little too much. But I, I, it's funny because his his attitude totally shifts, like in a 180 between one mission and the next, because like mm-hmm. there's a story beat where he kind of like explains everything. He's like, all right, fall in, blah blah blah, and then his his whole attitude completely shifts. I'm like, I wish you had been more like this version of yourself for the, for at least half the game versus mm-hmm. being a total douche the whole time. But I don't know, it, it was fine. Uh, Again, nothing really... St- I mean, there's a couple set-piece moments that are memorable. One involving a train I thought was pretty cool, and another one in a bell tower. Those were cool. But other than that, I can't really remember any specific set-piece moments in particular. In the set-piece moments, you're not involved in them. It's just a cutscene. It is, The yeah. train one is mm-hmm. a cutscene. The bell tower cutscene. It's like I'm not acting. I'm not playing right. through these. At least in Uncharted, when... For instance, on Charter Form, the bell tower's falling. You're it playing looks, that looks whole like thing. You're like jumping and running <laughs> through it and stuff. No, yeah. Nothing like that, as far as I've played, happens in this game. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Again, I still think it's worth playing, yeah. but it's definitely not up there for my favorite Call of Duty. Campaigns. I just feel like this is. It's funny that his name's Call of Duty World War II because it feels like this is just World War II the game. Right. Play these iconic battles. Mm-hmm. Just play them. You know, yeah, that's just what it feels like. Mm-hmm. There's no, I know there there is a story there, but it's not really compelling to me, and I don't feel attached to these characters like I wanted to. I wanted this band of brothers to, mm-hmm. I wanted to care about them, and I wanted to, you know, follow them through the war, and 
if one of them died or something, I wanted it to be like a punch to the gut and mm-hmm. stuff. And that's just, I think part of the problem is, is how much jumping around that happens. Yeah, Why jump exactly. around? It's always progressing forward, but all those pauses, it's just time away from it's the characters. Weeks. Yeah, like, weeks and it's months. It's D-Day. The second mission's like three weeks mm-hmm. later. You're, mm-hmm. you're one of your friends, sorry, spoiler alert, gets stabbed in the first mission mm-hmm. and he looks like he's going to die. And then it's like three weeks later, we're up here in Paris. And then he's, Zussman's a tough I'm, son of a bitch. Yeah. He's new. I'm fine now, Captain. <laughs> Let me go. So uh, I was like, what was the point of that? Yeah. I mean, I get they like have, they no have so much ground to cover to get through the European theater of World mm-hmm. War Two. But at the same time, I'm like, I would have rather them done like part of that experience and just stay with those characters nonstop like they did with Infinite Warfare versus like we have to hit all the beats, which I appreciate because all those moments are huge in World mm-hmm. War Two. But at the same time, I think it would have been more effective to have a smaller story that maybe the farthest you make it is the liberation of Paris in this game but you, you're with those characters the entire yeah. time like the liberation of Paris mission almost felt like that should have been the climactic finish in a way yeah. compared to the last mission you play I understand. but still really fun uh, yeah, overall it's fun if you like World War 2 and it's yeah. even funner mm-hmm. and I haven't played the multiplayer yet but I feel this is kind of the op- exact opposite of last year where everybody's raving about how fun the multiplayer is and the right. story's kind of you know meh as opposed to infinite warfare mm-hmm. where the campaign was spectacular compared yeah. to the multiplayer the multiplayer does feel i guess we can move into that now it feels huge for some okay. reason because i think it's cool because when you start multiplayer it's like all right soldier uh we got a you welcome to headquarters blah blah we're gonna throw you and you got to pick a division like go to the theater and watch all these films and choose which one you're gonna be and you kind of pick your division it's like all right we're gonna throw you into the, your first match and you got to prove yourself for your division or whatever I got my ass kicked in that match by oh, the did way you? i played with a bunch of like 40 ranked people Dang. i went like five and eleven i was so okay pissed. So I was under the assumption that everyone who starts in that yeah. first uh, oh, no. opening match is Not the same me. level. Hell no. Okay, I thought um, for I me everyone like was, was like level one. I was on a map I had never played. I was going to play a beginning match, but it was too late last night. And in the lobby, I was there were I I noticed that there were level thirties and stuff in there with me, mm-hmm. and I thought it was because typically in multiplayer there's a specific playlist where you have to be between like level one mm-hmm. and 15 okay to kind of get your feet wet but i don't think this one does that i guess that makes sense because i did pick up someone sniper that had this crazy camo on it at one point yeah, i was like the how did this guy get this already was it a loot box but yeah. i guess he was i really like that in their loot boxes i know this is like a way off topic but all the like the cosmetic stuff they're just cosmetics like there's no stats on the guns or anything like there there are but mm-hmm. they're just like all like the different versions of that gun it's just cosmetic okay oh, which is cool, cool. Uh, I will say I did enjoy that first match though because I I actually cared about my because I normally have gotten over to the point where I like truly care about my performance in multiplayer these days but I actually care it's like I kind of want to prove myself for my division I was like really gung ho about it and it's like all right congratulations you finished your first match and they throw you in headquarters and have you explored headquarters yet no that's very cool like I was surprised at how much I really really enjoy it I can't wait to see how they expand upon it in future games I hope it stays around did you go look at everything I did I mean again straight up destiny dude you go to the mail guy same kind of like the character walks into the screen the background's blurred and it's like the menu they're like standing there like hello soldier pick your uh, your daily challenges or whatever it's like mm-hmm. bounties from destiny That's cool. which i do like the challenges like the first ones I picked, there's daily challenges and weekly challenges and the daily ones i picked up were uh get 100 kills in any game type and uh win a match of tdm was another challenge it's like daily challenges like that to get credits to spend on more loot boxes you can get loot and boxes stuff. by doing these challenges yes that's cool mm-hmm. and then the weekly challenges are bigger and badder ones like win uh like 10 matches of war or something yeah, and like there's that. one for like win one match in every game type. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm really into that. I like that a lot. It kind of gives more incentive for me to try different game types yeah. every week, Definitely. which I, I think really, really works for Call of Duty because I'm the kind of guy that I'm like, I'm fine with playing Domination 24-7, but if it's like, hey, jump into search and destroy for like an hour and win three matches you get a loot i'm not saying like loot boxes are awesome but i'm saying like if i'm going to get rewards for it in game then i have more of an incentive to play those game modes which is cool Uh, i love just running around headquarters i like uh like there's a uh, prestige area you can go to there's a theater where you can go watch like films from either sledgehammer or the films where you can choose different divisions but i think the coolest thing is if you go into the theater and there's like an mlg live event going on yeah you can go in that theater and just watch the live event at headquarters Quarters, which is cool yeah it's gonna be really cool like seeing if a lot of people get into that for like mm-hmm. call of duty esports or something yeah there's a gunsmith where you can go uh 
how does the gunsmith work again in Call of Duty? Isn't it like you just customize? Uh, I don't know. Like, is I it paint jobs? Is that, I'm thinking paint jobs. Of, I think there's like four options and three of them are grayed out right now. Yeah. So. yeah. Both paint jobs and the emblem sharing and creating is both grayed out at the moment. I think you, you can, prestige your weapons down there too. Okay. Because yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Um, but you can create, I think it's cool. You can create paint jobs and then upload those paint jobs. And if people like them, they can download them. Oh, cool. the same thing with emblems. If you create emblems, there's an emblem guy where you can upload them and share them and people can download them. I think it'd be so cool. I don't know how this would work if it you could even control it but have an in-game uh, e- uh economy where pl- let's say a player creates this emblem that is just so badass and everyone's like i want that emblem what if he uploads it and depending on how many people download it you're just getting in-game in-game credits for creating it <laughs> like, no, no, no. like i don't know how they could control it because what if some player like uses it as an exploit but like everyone like let's say ali is like hey guys i created an emblem yeah. i have nine million followers go download my emblem and he makes like a billion in-game credits i feel like they couldn't do that i think that'd be cool yeah. if they did something like maybe a hundred people downloaded your emblem we're going to give you a little something for that i don't know but that's cool. I love that there's a one v one arena, which I've yet to do. But you yeah, can just queue in and hang out, and you get you get thrown in there and what can do one on one matches. Like objectives in the top left is like win a one v one match. Yeah, me too. That's what I'm excited about. And there's t- challenges for the one v one pit as well. Um, one thing I think I have a like I think the servers are messed up right now because every time I go to the headquarters, it's empty. Yeah, it's empty. Same with me. I don't know what's going on because I queued into one v one and no one ever showed up. I was like, I think mm-hmm. I'm here by myself. Yeah. <laughs> So. Apparently, like, right when the servers went live, like, Friday morning mm-hmm. at midnight, uh, there was a nightmare, like, no one could play. I heard that, so. yeah. I wasn't on until later in the day. But what, I think it's also how, how also great how seamless the gun range is, where you're in third person, you walk into the gun range, instantly goes into yeah, third person, great. you can start shooting at targets. That's cool. I got a trophy for doing something at the gun range, I think. I don't know what I did. <laughs> Sharpshooter Steve. I think, like, <laughs> balloons popped up or something. I don't know. Okay. Uh, what was something else that's cool in there? Um, score streak practice. That's nice. I, I've always appreciated the fact they've added a gun range to Call of Duty because there's certain weapons. I'm like, oh, back in the day, like the only way I can test this gun is to actually play a match. Yeah. And if I get my ass kicked, you can literally just go into your menus and change the attachments if you want to test something else. Right. Very cool. And I love that I can test out score streaks as well. Some that I've again, you wouldn't be because some I would probably never use because I can hardly ever get score streaks in Call of Duty these <laughs> days. So it's fun to try them out. But uh, playing multiplayer is really fun. Like you said, it's very laid back like it used to be not laid back i mean it's fast paced and brutal but no one's jumping around like crazy everyone's on the ground and it feels intense i'm having a lot of fun with it um Mm -hmm. i think i've played maybe around eight to ten matches all last night um i'm pretty much exclusively playing the inventory um i did unlock the shotgunner class with the explosive rounds or are they explosive rounds or are they just they're like, like dragon in, fire? Okay. Yeah, they're like fire and incendiary. I think yeah. that's. The I, I haven't word. actually used the class, but I picked up the shotgun like several times from other people using it, and that thing's deadly. It is very deadly. It has quite a bit of range on it too. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it needs to be because mm-hmm. that's all you got. But uh, I'm really enjoying the multiplayer. The maps are they're fine. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing too flashy. Obviously, it's World War Two. Right. I will say that the maps. Uh, I mean, like you said, I haven't played on all of them, but I played on they this. all are just, oh, uh, crates over there, and there's a bunker over there, and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But I was playing on this one snowy map that was kind of open, and I felt at a huge disadvantage for not, like, sniping. Is but, that uh, the map called, I think it's called Arden Forest? And there's, there's, like, bees up on the top, and then the C and A are on the bottom. Okay, there's I haven't like played that everywhere. map yet. Yeah. Okay, because I will say the Arden, the one from the beta, the snow map, I think that map is still just is not very good. I don't like it, yeah. Mm. Uh, I've only played, it's funny, the only maps I've played on, with the exception of one, have all been from the beta so far. I've only played about five multiplayer matches. I really like the USS, whatever that ship's called. That's a cool map. You fight on the deck of the ship. That one's cool. I'm really, I don't, I feel like I would have heard about it by now, but if there's not a map for war on D-Day, I'm going to be so devastated, dude. That makes too much sense to not be in the game. There has to be an, if it's not in the game, there better be a good explanation as to why, because that would be the funnest game type of all time. I haven't touched war yet, so... Gosh, it would be so freaking good, dude. There has to be. Like, imagine playing the D-Day mission, but multiplayer, where it'd be dynamic every time. Mm-hmm. It'd be so awesome, dude. Yeah. Like, it makes too much sense. You storm the beach. You have to, like, you know, like building the bridge in the beta map. You have to blow up that trench like mm-hmm. you do in the campaign. That's your first objective. Uh, maybe people along the way can build up. I know this doesn't make sense in the context of the historical aspect. Maybe they can build up walls or something to progress up the beach so these guys and tourists can't slaughter you the entire time. You bust through, you have to work your way up to the bunkers, and then when you're inside, just like in the campaign, you have to clear out all the bunkers, but let's say you have to blow something up in each one where 
teams can split into two. It kind of turns into uh, what's that game mode and multiplayer where there's like two bombs. It's called uh, Search and Destroy. No, it's uh, it's like Search and Destroy. It's different though. There's you can go to two different locations to plant a bomb. Well, let's say you have to split into two two teams and that go. Is search and destroy, right? No, search and destroy is just one bomb. There's a game mode where uh, there's two bombs to choose. Is from. there really in Call of Duty? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what it's called. I don't called. play a lot of search and destroy, so I don't. Yeah. Know. But uh, you can. I, I just think blow up destiny up, when I. Think you can blow up the bunkers and then progress further into. J- I mean, imagine the campaign mission, but multiplayer and war mode. That makes so much sense, and it'd be amazing. That's what I'm hoping they implement at some point. If it's not already in there. But I feel like if it was, people would be already raving about it because that's what I would adore okay. more than anything. Is there a capture of the flag? Uh, I haven't looked. I'm not sure. Okay. So I've just been sticking to Team Deathmatch at the moment. Okay. So yeah. multiplayer, though, it really does. There, there is a D Day War mode. No way. Yeah. I just watched some gameplay for it. Does me. it look cool? Yeah. <laughs> Dude. I mean, it looks like D Day, <laughs> but War mode. Oh, I want to try it so bad. I hope it's as good as it, it is in, in my head, how good it sounds. Have you been using the first assault rifle? Have you switched to the carbine? Uh, I've been rolling with the M1 Grand. Yeah. So I need. I really need a red dot sight on that thing because in multiplayer I suck. See, with I don't like sight. the sight. Dude, yes, that is exactly what I was hoping for, man. I knew <laughs> that made so much sense. It has yeah, to be in there. Objective is blow it up. Blow it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. I should be a game designer, dude. Yeah. No, that's that's fantastic. I cannot wait to play cool. that. Yeah. No multiplayer that might be better than the mission. It'll actually yeah, it might, give yeah. you like some uh, multiplayer. It, I think is very very solid. I'm excited to get back to it. not not to the point where I'm like I'm gonna play a ton of Call of Duty multiplayer, but I think I'm genuinely excited to go back to it. In addition to everything else we have coming out, I yeah. will dabble on that more than I have in the past multiplayer games. It's keeping my attention for now. Definitely, yeah, I look forward to playing. Some and headquarters is is super cool. I, can, I I'm excited for us to all run around headquarters together, and maybe like me and Preston want to go duke it out in the one v one arena, or maybe some some douchebag in the lobby's like, "You suck ass!" And like, "Let's take it to the pit, bro!" <laughs> like actually one v one people. It's so cool. I love cool. it. So I'm very excited to see how that evolves into the next Call of Duties. I hope a Battlefront 2's campaign doesn't disappoint, disappoint me like this one, though. Right. So Same with me. Yep. I'm wondering what they could do. I mean, we'll talk about it, obviously, in a couple of weeks, but gameplay-wise, what they could do aside from just shooting, which is fine in, in Star Wars, but I wonder if they'll have any set-piece, interactive set-piece Oh, piece Star moments. Wars? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I mean, I, I mean it looks I, like they're trying to do things, controlling yeah. a droid, flying the ships, all that crap. At the end of the day, I'm just most excited to see the story that connects Return of the mm-hmm. Jedi to Force Awakens. That's the thing is, I think that's what, I mean, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare had cool set piece moments, particularly if you're out flying in space. And I don't even know how you would do that in World War II. I know. Well, obviously, you're not going to be yeah. flying in space in World War II. But um, I you're not like, a superhero in World War II. Exactly. I feel like this game would be... Even with this type of gameplay, if it just had a story I cared about, it would make it so, so much better. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just yeah. I would say campaign, I'd give it like a C, C plus, maybe a B yeah. and then multiplayer. As of right now, I'd give an A minus really good. I'd give it an A. Now, zombies, I can't speak on yeah, yet because I've yet to play it, but I think it looks very cool. Yeah. I've just yet to play it. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Call cool, of Duty, man. man. Pretty solid. I don't think I played anything else. I, um, yep. I, I, we already talked about Assassin's Creed, Wolfenstein, and Mario. I want to finish Evil Within too. Right. I do want to finish that. Hmm. I might knock that out once Battlefront's over, just before I dive back into Assassin's Creed or whatever. Okay. Because that nice. is a really, really fun game. Yeah, Assassin's Creed is what I'm going to round my year out with. I'm going to get through Wolfenstein. Of course, I'll always be playing Mario for the mm-hmm. for however long it takes me to quote unquote complete that game, which is yeah. not anytime soon. Uh, but Assassin's Creed, I'm going to spend the most time with in December, more than likely. Nice. So, yeah. That's great, cool. man. Uh, community question real quick. Okay. Two Savage Sutton says, Hey, guys, with Call of Duty, Call of Duty World War II coming out soon, which obviously it is out now. Apologies, apologies for the delay in this question. And having the original Modern Warfare getting a remastered version, do you guys think we will ever see Modern Warfare 2 and or 3 get a remastered version? Maybe. I could see Infinity War doubling down on their remaster, like because obviously, I mean, despite how much hate surrounded Infinite Warfare, it was still a very big success, and part of that reason is probably because Modern Warfare being attached to it. Yeah. So I think Modern Warfare Two would do gangbusters because people are also in love with that game. I don't, th- I don't see why they wouldn't remaster Modern Warfare Two with their next Call of Duty, which again will be another two years from now. So, uh, I would love that. 
I think it would also help. I, I don't know if they're going to continue with space just because of all the backlash. I would love to see them continue in space because I'm I know Press and I are in the minority when we say I, I thought it was cool. Like I would not mind more space, especially as good as the story was. If you can continue that again, man, I'm all in. But if they for the sake of the vast majority, if they change the setting, but also packaged in Modern Warfare 2, I think it'd be a huge success for yeah, maybe Infinite, Warfare. maybe the next Infinity Ward game. They will. Yeah, I'd like to see that. We'll see. So they can trick us into buying exactly. shit game, so yeah. I have to get it. Now, eventually, I think it's available now, but Modern Warfare Remastered eventually sold yeah. separately, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I wonder if they will sell it separately right out the gate or package it again. I'll probably package it. Probably package it. I, I feel like I mean, it's a, it'd be foolish not to. Yeah. So. I don't know. Don't give them any ideas. Consider, scary. like, if you want early access to Modern Warfare 2 Remastered, you have to buy this Yeah, Call I of thought Duty. that was cool. I didn't do it, but... For Modern Warfare 2, I probably would do that. I don't know. Something like the campaign. I like Modern Warfare 2's campaign. That was the most, uh, like, Michael Bay style Call of Duty, I think. Yeah. Modern Warfare 2's campaign. Actually, yeah. I would do that. I really like Modern Warfare 2's campaign. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. I, I just remember this brief moment from Modern Warfare 2's campaign where I think it's Soap. Because you don't play as Soap in Modern Warfare 2, do you? You play... Yes. No, no, no. Soap is your, your dude. Your you buddy. play as, like, Roach. Because I remember Soap tackles a guy out of a building and, like, lands on a car right in front of you. I was like, well, that was freaking epic. I remember that from Modern Warfare 2. Oh, you play as Soap on, like, the last mission. Okay. Or maybe the last two missions. Because your Roach guy gets... Yeah. By Shepard. Mm-hmm. Remember that? I remember that. The greatest betrayal of all time yeah that was crazy yeah mm-hmm. that was a good story that sounds it great is. guys yeah that was my most hype game of all time really when that game was coming out oh my gosh dude i was on the forums consistently <laughs> every day just daydreaming with other people that was their last mm-hmm. attempt at trying to eliminate the call of duty title yeah when that game was I first announced that. call of duty jacob was like microscopic it was on just the cover modern it was just warfare modern warfare 2 and then like as soon as they reintroduced the Call of Duty title, it had so much more. Dude, when traction. they first unveiled the game, it was just Modern Warfare Two, right? Not even Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't know the story behind it, but I think they were trying to separate themselves. Yeah, I think maybe. No, you fast forward to nowadays. Call yeah, of Duty. now it's just huge Call of gold. Duty. <laughs> yeah, World War Two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy how big call of duty as it's wild yeah, it's massive. before we uh move on to actual news i did want to say that i did beat super mario odyssey oh like the main like story portion. i did yeah um i haven't done the extra content how many moves do you have i have about a little over 300 i believe impressive yeah da, 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 um, <laughs> the game's great uh i said this to you both but right once you get past to where you both are in new donk city it gets so good i mean i'm already smiling game. thinking yeah. about it jacob um i'm gonna play it tonight at work yeah oh, it's gonna be great oh, you won't have sound that's that's a real no, yeah I'm, i'll be listening to uh probably some jazz band or something yeah. well that's just as good um <laughs> hey there is some jazz in new donk city there is i really i'm really into it <laughs> um can you watch this really quick jacob sure what are you pulling up over there it's, it's this mario video that cracks me up okay Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. Yes, thank you. Who was that? I'm sure. I don't know. It's just this okay. random Twitter just video. Viral video. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I honestly didn't think that anything would be as fun as Horizon was that came out this year, but I was wrong. This Mario is Whoa. super fun, dude. Whoa. It's like right up there. For is this me, your game me. of the year, Jacob? It's, it might be. Oh, wow. Really so six out of ten for you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, um, not, you're not the first person. Yeah, it's, would say that. it's weird because I've only played one other Mario game my whole life, which was the original NES Mario. Wow, that was the last one. Yeah, it's Holy the, crap. It's the only 2D, 3D Mario I've ever played. That's I've amazing. never played a 3D. So you never is... played like 64 or anything? No. Oh, Holy wow. crap. That's yeah, amazing. Dude. So this is, it's almost like a new experience for me. In right. A way. And uh, I've just, I've seen what I've been missing out in the 3D space of Mario for so many years. Oh, yeah. Like, the game is just so fun. It's great. It's Are there any sunshine throwbacks in this game? Don't he ask me. He wouldn't know. Like Easter eggs? <laughs> I, have, I have no clue. I think it'd be so cool if, like, for just a, one portion of a kingdom, you throw on the old nozzle from Sunshine. That'd be nice. so cool. <laughs> there is a, I mean, there's a Mario 64, like, costume mm-hmm. like that you get. After yeah, I've seen the 64 it. skin. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. cool um what else can i say without spoiling anything the boss fights the game's easy um, yeah, yeah but i don't know it's still fun 
I don't know. Every boss fight has like three phases. Like that's the whole Try game, on. basically. But just how some of the fights, how they look aesthetically, or just you know, just the comedic effects, and there's so many different things that make the game great. It's just mm-hmm. every time I play it, I'm just in a great mood. So there are surprises to come. Oh yeah. Okay. There's, there's quite a few surprises. I'm excited. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. Some you would have never expected to. Oh, that gets me so yeah. excited. I think the funniest skin I've seen so far. I know there's countless, but the one where you're uh, Diddy Kong. <laughs> it's Mario's <laughs> I head. Seen that it's one. So That's funny. Hilarious. You have like Diddy Kong's body and just Mario's head. It's amazing. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I can say. Uh, I'm I'm excited to keep playing it. Like I told you, I'm going up to I'm going to be traveling for Thanksgiving more than likely. So you know, it's going to be great to have the Switch and just have both Zelda and Mario to, if not mm. finish up, at least enjoy mm. a little more. While you I'm got on. that Zelda DLC coming. Oh, that too, dude. Mm. So I pumped. forgot about that. <laughs> then we got Horizon. There might DLC not be a lot week. of time for Assassin's Creed. You're for right. All this You're DLC right. Do we know, when is this? Uh, Breath of the Wild DLC coming out? Do we? Know? They is, they swear it's this year, mm-hmm. but they haven't said. They it. haven't announced okay. it yet. Because yeah. we got Horizon this coming this next t- week tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Well, this is going up on a Monday. Oh, okay. So, oh, wow. I was I about to that's What? <laughs> Sunday. I'll okay. probably blow through that before I continue Wolfenstein. Just yeah, get through I'm it doing. Quick. I'm gonna finish up World War II's campaign. Then I'm gonna jump right into Horizon. I'm gonna take some more pretty pictures in that game. I get to use the new updated photo mode, which I've yet to use. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know that was a thing. Because yeah. I think the photo mode in Horizon is outstanding. Oh, pretty, yeah. The photo so. mode in Mario is fun to fool around. Yeah, it's fun. I, I think yeah. Assassin's Creed is good too. It's received a few updates because it was pretty basic when I first used it, but apparently it's received a few updates. Every game's gonna launch with a photo mode. I now. love photo mode, dude. I think yeah. it's awesome because there's, yeah. especially with as great as games look these days, there are so many moments. I'm like, man, I really want people to see what I'm seeing right now. So it's fun. Yeah. Especially Mario because he has so many different facial animations and stuff. Mm-hmm. You can get some of the funniest pictures out of that game. Dancing? I have, yeah. yeah. It's a lot I of think uh, one of the funniest pictures I've seen it was like, um, someone pretending like a fake quote from Nintendo like everyone's gonna we can't wait to see what our fans do with this photo mode and this shows like reality and it's Mario jumping in a frog like licking the ball sack <laughs> <laughs> so funny yeah I saw that one it's awesome that's great well, guys you wanna get into the meat of this podcast yeah let's do yeah, it let's do it well this pretty much was the meat but you know yeah. what I mean <laughs> uh, this is the It's Obvious Game podcast where so my two best friends and I get together every single week to discuss video games obviously you can find all our content and you can find all of our content including the video version of this podcast over at youtube.com slash It's Obvious Gaming if YouTube isn't good for you or you'd like to take us on the go you can find this podcast weekly on iTunes Google Play Spotify Audio Boom, and other podcasting services please check the description down below for timestamps to skip throughout the podcast links to our social media pages our discord channel PlayStation community and other means to connect with us if you have not done so already please subscribe to the channel and be sure to like and comment down below to get involved with the asavius community doing so helps us out tremendously and we would forever be in your debt with all that out of the way hey man what's the news that was flawless thank that you. was solid thank you really solid i thought i stuttered a few times but uh, thank you if you did i i uh, was daydreaming you were just not paying attention yeah. like usual jacob yeah. i was I paying attention a lot. and i noticed <laughs> but it's okay because we all have stutters okay like thank call you. of duty world war ii's campaign Ooh. <laughs> piece of shit yes. four out of ten uh blizzcon yeah. 2017 is occurring as we speak uh, today's day two, correct, Jacob? Yeah. Okay. Bring us up to speed. What are the biggest announcements? The biggest Diablo. that that, me- that are most meaningful to you, being the Blizzard guy at the table. Was Diablo four announced? No. Mm. Nothing for Diablo. Not I don't care. Then it's a shame. That's that's a shame because there's a lot of great announcements. I want Diablo um, four, Jacob. As so do I. the things that matter most to me are Overwatch and World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. So I'll start with Overwatch. There's a new hero. Uh, her name's Moira, like uh, Moira Queen from yeah. the Arrow. <laughs> Moira. Has nothing to do, do with... Your, uh, do your Deathstroke impression. Moira Queen. <laughs> Moira I Queen. I don't know what else he says. The guy so. from uh, Spartacus. The show Spartacus. He's actually back in Arrow now. He is, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think he's... He's like an ally to them now, isn't he? Uh, not really. Okay. Well, he, he helps them at one point. It's a shame because I really, really love the first couple seasons Show's of Arrow and Flash, anymore. but I just can't, I can't watch it anymore. I don't know why dude. I'm still watching it. Like, it's, like, it's like part of me wants to go back and watch it, but I just can't do it for some the reason. The Flash is decent, but Arrow is just... I don't know. It's pretty far gone. I don't like the Wonder Team they've thrown together. Yeah, I, like, I, I just miss the glory days of it just being Oliver. And I even liked him in... Uh, was it called like Arsenal or something? Was the guy in the red? Yeah, yeah he was cool. Was he called Arsenal? Yeah. Was it Arsenal? I think. Is this a new Arsenal? Bungie Blizzard game? Yeah, it's a Blizzard game. It's a Blizzard game. <laughs> We're way off topic. We, we extremely <laughs> digress. Brings the arrow but, uh, on when it was one. just the two of them, I liked it the most. Yeah. And when Oliver was shooting people in the face with arrows. I'm Diggle's like, a wimp now. Is he a wimp? Yeah, but he's he dressed up as arrow right now, I heard. 
no. He's he's taken on the mantle. Of oh, I'm 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 only like two episodes into the season, so. Okay, I am way far behind, dude. I dropped off like episode five of last season. Yeah. Let's stop talking about yeah, Arrow. Yeah. Let's, let's bring it in. <laughs> um, we're talking about uh the new hero, Moira. She's Moira a support, queen, new healer, uh, and uh, the Salter DPS. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, she's classified as a support, but she has like one hand that heals people, and then one that I guess sucks the life of people, which mm-hmm. is pretty cool. Um, she's part of Italian, which is like that evil organization, which is like Reaper, Sombra, all those people. Um, she looks really fun to play. I've watched several like gameplay videos of people playing at BlizzCon. Um, it's interesting because like when she heals people, there's like a little bar and it kind of, de- you know, it what's the word for gets rid of depletes depletes yes <laughs> i wanted to say replenishes but that's the opposite it's also a must need yeah it's also a must need <laughs> um but you can only heal for so long and you have to use like the life draining damaging ability to like get your bar filled back up oh that's heal. very interesting yeah so it's not like because she's kind of like zenyatta where she can right. both heal and uh damage mm-hmm. but uh she's a little different in that way and her ultimate's super cool it's like a kamehameha from like goku really? it's like a it's a combination of the red and or not red and yellow and purple, purple beam okay but when you shoot it at enemies it damages and then when you shoot it at allies it heals really so cool. it's it's super cool now is it something that is continuous like when you activate it it shoots continuously or yeah, can, yeah, can you kind of control it it's well you can move it yeah it's not okay. like ferris well you can move ferris barrage too it's a bad example mm-hmm. but yeah you can move the beam anywhere you want it's like a duration okay yeah um i, I really like that because obviously the major difference from mercy for example is mercy can continuously heal yeah. or power boost but i like how if you're healing someone you kind of have to oh i'm gonna throw all of my healing uh, juice into <laughs> this character, but uh, I, yeah. oh, I should save some for yeah, this guy. Gotta, gotta hey, is that a, is that a switch now? A switch with Mercy? Uh, Does she have juice? No, no, she's oh, continuous. No, no. Yeah, he was saying that she wasn't like. Oh, okay. yeah, like okay, you can okay, just okay. heal all day with Mercy, gotcha, but gotcha. It, like, oh, I want to heal part of him. I don't want to heal part of him. Or I don't want to heal all of him. Oh, I ran out. I gotta uh, steal someone's yeah. health to get more. That's cool. Also, a cool thing, you know how like Symmetra throws like kind of orbs that float through the air. Yeah. Um, she does the same thing, but she can throw a healing and a, a damaging one. Mm-hmm. Like one's yellow, one's purple. They like they bounce off surfaces too, so it's kind of cool. And it can hit multiple enemies. Like if you hit, if you throw that orb into your allies, it heals all of them at the same time. Nice. Or if you throw it into the group of enemies, the purple one, it'll all damage them at the same time. This character sounds right up my alley. Yeah. Because I've always loved healers, but I also like to put out a little damage every now and then, yeah. which Lucio is one of my favorites for that reason. But yeah, he just doesn't do very much damage. Right. So I think this character sounds like a ton of fun. Yeah. I'm excited to play her. Moira Queen. They also announced uh, the new map, Blizzard World. I love so that, dude. Basically a Blizzard theme park which looks magical yeah, somewhere blizzard, i wish blizzard I idolizing like, themselves of course yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a bethesda land that they, that they did at e3 right correct yeah um they actually showed a map and it like looked identical to, to the bethesda world like obviously not the same titles mm-hmm. but just like the look of it looked almost identical to mm-hmm. what bethesda did which i thought was pretty interesting. i love that idea i'm not even an expert on blizzard ip but yeah. it looks so cool and i thought it was cool like like this this uh theme park's in the overwatch universe so there's no mention of overwatch in it because in that universe blizzard didn't make overwatch overwatch just exists mm-hmm. so it's all like the other blizzard games that's cool yeah i wonder if any of the overwatch characters are fans of some of those games maybe yeah. i think it'd be really cool if like tracer's a fan of starcraft or something yeah. and it's just, like offhandedly maybe there's new voice lines when you're playing a match like Starcraft or World of Warcraft. I love that game. And like one of them says something like that. I have a theory about Overwatch. I think they keep introducing all these Talion members because they're going to create some kind of cine- like movie or cinematic. And they're going to tie in like Overwatch versus Talion. How do you feel about that, Garrett? That'd be amazing. I, I want to cycle back real quick. Because the last two heroes have been Doomfist and now Moira. Moira. And they're both power, part of Talon. Correct. I, I, Moria looks like, if I'm not mistaken, from her animated short, not like full-on animated cinematic short, but like the comic booky style one, it looked like she gave Reaper his teleportation yeah. ability. Yeah, there was like a short little like origin cinematic for mm-hmm. her and... She she like she has a blink ability. I forgot to mention that, and it's it's sort of like Reaper's wraith form, but it's like a it's a quick blink. But okay. you move pretty quick when you. So do is it most similar to Tracer in that sense? No, it's it's. I would say it's most similar to Reaper. It's probably a combination of the two. Okay. But, oh, so it's more uh, it like looks teleport. the same as Reaper's wraith form. It's just like a teleport. Okay. Yeah. Now, now Reaper's obviously is a little slower. Like he kind of dissolves and yeah. then reappears. Now, so well, it's quicker. I think than she that? gave him the the ability to do that. Correct. Because she's a 
She's like a genetic scientist. Okay. So I think there she was brought in to tie in to kind of give all these villains augments. Like maybe Sombra's like hacking ability. I don't know how she does that. So, so if they're building up these two different factions, do you think it'll be primarily for a new expansion? Not expansion for a watch, but like a new event? Kind of how... Maybe uh, either that or like I think what I said, they're going to make like a little movie or something about it. Like I think we'll undoubtedly get book. another cinematic for sure or something like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, whether it be like a graphic novel or a... Even a short, I would. Everyone's yeah, dying I for an know. Overwatch movie. I mean, especially yeah. when you. I mean, we'll get to them. Talk, seeing those World of Warcraft cinematics, dude. I'm like, please make a yeah. movie. I beg you guys to They're do so. so. Good. They're amazing. Um, one more thing about Overwatch. There was a Reinhardt cinematic. It's. I've yet good. to see it's that. Probably one. my favorite one they've made. Even more so than May. Yeah. Wow. I really liked May's. Um, it's and Reinhardt's really young in it, so it's interesting seeing him so young, and he has a completely different attitude that's cool you kind of see how he becomes what he is now nice i'm excited to see that i meant to watch that before we started yeah oh well you'll see it eventually Mm -hmm. um that's pretty much all that happened for overwatch um world of warcraft i'm super excited to be a fan of world of warcraft right now um they announced a new expansion Mm -hmm. uh it's called battle for azeroth didn't they say that the last one was the last one no oh they didn't no Okay. I don't think they've really said when it's going to be the last one. Hmm. I think like so when World of back, Warcraft they... ends up like Destiny 2's player base, that's when they'll be done. Yeah. That was a huge diss against De- Destiny 2, sorry. Damn. Yeah, I'm salty about <laughs> Bungie right now. <laughs> they're just doing... Oh, they're, they are making strides to make the game better this, in the next update. Destiny 2's solid. I think it'll continue to get better yeah. over time. I don't know if I'm going to play it on PC. I've already put so much effort in it. I was telling you, depending on what my experience is like later this week with the DLC, that'll determine whether or not I actually pick it up on PC. I mean, I it's, think. It's, it's nice playing on PC. Yeah, it's great. Like, it's I don't deny that process. at all. I just mean as far as just the game, the gameplay itself. If there's nothing that really grabs me from the DLC, I don't yeah, think I'm going to pick it up. Speaking of PC, super quick side note. I bought a really nice mouse that I like my mouse more. Do you want it? I'd love it. It's in my car. Okay. If you want. Did you bring it for that specific reason? It was in my car because I was going to take it back, but okay. I figured I'd just give it to you. What well, kind of mouse is it? if you're going to make a lot of money back, by all means. I mean, it's not like it a back. ton of money. It's at least $100, isn't it? No. Okay. God, no. It's like okay. 50 bucks. Okay. Yeah, I'd love you it. You can have it. That'd be great. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. I know you still just have your other one. Mm-hmm. Which that one's fine, but yeah. I'm totally I mean, this open one's to another like way mouse. nicer, though. So. Cool. Here you go. Nice. Um... World of Warcraft, the game of the love of my life, if, if, if it was in game form. <laughs> the one that drew you away from your friends for so many years. It did. <laughs> Made you late to many gatherings. Yeah. I'm still late to this day to everything, so. That's okay. Maybe it planted the seeds. At least me. you're consistent. Yeah. <laughs> I am consistent. Yeah. That's one thing. Um, Basically, this is the, f- it's, it's not the first time, but it's on this scale where a whole expansion's based on it. I feel like it's the first time where the Horde and the Alliance are really clashing against one another because in multiple expansions they've kind of worked together to i don't know overcome you know really powerful enemies or whatnot but you know they're actually like the whole expansion is based off them their hatred for each other and one trying to defeat the other which is really cool to me bless you that's kind of the foundation of what warcraft is is the horde and there's the alliance for the horde it's the humans and the horde for the alliance yeah who do you stand for I've always what been on you stand for. That's a ghost inside line. Mm, I've always been an alliance player. <laughs> okay. Of course, Jacob. Yeah. So original. Oh, you don't. You like look the like an alliance man. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful blue so eyes. Much, you're very muscular. Yeah, we have honor. Yeah, you're a handsome man. Therefore, you're with the alliance. Yeah. I mean, that alliance guy that was leading uh, the alliance <laughs> in the cinematic. Like, yeah, the, I'd probably uh, date that guy. The king <laughs> that died in the last expansion. <laughs> that was his dad. Now he he was still like a. I guess like a teenager. Then oh, now really? Kind of growing That's up. awesome. If you play for the Horde, how does the story end? Would you be losing? Are you just assuming the Horde's gonna gonna lose? I would assume so. Yeah, there's no one's ever really lost. Oh, uh, okay. It's, just, it's ongoing. It's an MMO, right? Okay. So, I mean, I don't know if there will ever be like a end. Mm. I, I I doubt it, but I mean, like I think World of War, World of Warcraft is going to end eventually, like mm-hmm. the MMO, obviously, but. Or maybe not. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if there's ever like a con- conclusion to the story. All the wizards sense. unite together yeah, and maybe. throw down the big dragon man. Mm. I really wish you guys would have played WoW Dude, at some point. I'm not I'm not putting it out of, out, like, out 
I can't contain my excitement for this expansion coming out, and there's no release date for it. But you know, like I've—I I know you guys couldn't care less. No, I, I'm not. When I oh, say, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me and Preston are like speechless. We're both like, what? I'm not like sitting here trying, like saying you need to play. I'm just—I'm just excited. For what it. I will say is that World of Warcraft has always fascinated me, even though I have hardly played it. It has always blown my mind. Just. The idea. I mean, that was the first MMO that really, really impressed me when I saw it in action as a kid. And I was like, that's amazing that something like that exists and all these millions of people are playing it. Do you know how I discovered World of Warcraft? How was that? I was on some website and there was a like a random ad just on the website. You know, like how they used to do that on MySpace right. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I just clicked on it and I was like, oh, there's this person looks cool with this ad. I'm going to try this out. And downloaded it and then I fell in love ever since. That's I, how I discovered I, uh, the Coke game Coke, that Coke on coke.com you can play like a little rpg oh, coca-cola MMO. it's like a coca-cola okay. game gotcha i got I into that for a while coke. club penguin killed it man oh yeah classic but yeah i initially thought it was like some cheap internet game you know it's like when you see an ad for a game on mm-hmm. the internet you're like oh it's just some stupid knockoff thing yeah but no like i fell in love with it where You'll have that ad at the right corner, and it's like, hot anime, babe, MMO? Oh. Sign, <laughs> sign me up. Dude, some of the cringiest <laughs> things I've ever seen is those ads where it, 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 you can tell it's clearly a commercial for something, but they make it look like it's some Twitch streamer that's like, oh my gosh, oh yeah, my dragon is game. powered up. Okay, yes. everyone, let's see what it can do. I'm yeah. like, oh gosh. <laughs> Kills me, man. Dude, Slays what's killing me, dude. me right now is is the Final Fantasy 15 mobile game ads. I don't think I've noticed oh, yeah. those. I get them everywhere. everywhere. They are. <laughs> I get them everywhere. on Snapchat oh, all yeah? the time. Yeah, drives uh, me insane. It's so annoying. Is that the one with uh, that model girl who's promoting it, or am I thinking something else? There, so. every one of those apps has some ridiculously attractive girl like right. in a robe, and she's like, "Play for the summer online. Download today." And it ends. <laughs> All of them do that. This one has it too, but at least it plays the Final Fantasy theme. Hey, how about that new uh, Final Fantasy fishing game? Huh? Dude, did y'all see the trailer for Episode Ignis at Paris Games? I did. I did. Yeah. It looks epic. It, it does look, look pretty so cool. I'm so excited for that. Um, I wonder how many recipes, recipes, <laughs> recipes he's going to find in his, <laughs> his DLC. Um, a couple more things before we move on. The opening cinematic to the expansion, You should. everyone should watch that. It's such a good cinematic. Gorgeous. Even if you're not a fan of the game, I think it's really fun to watch it reminds me of how disappointed i was with world of warcraft's live action movie which i still stand by i think was fine i would watch a sequel to that movie but it reminds me that just if only blizzard could make a full movie with Mm. those cinematics i wonder why they haven't done it yet like is it just is a it, lot of money? I don't, yeah, like, I don't know if it's the budget or if I mean, maybe the they want to put their, their team that team on that kind of a project. Yeah, hey, I don't know, man. But why have they not done that? Know. Like even all it the Overwatch so shorts huge. are fantastic. Yeah, and that's the thing about cinematics like that. You don't need actors to be flawless face performers, so to speak. I mean, you need good voice actors, and I, I don't know if they do those with uh motion capture or motion performance capture because well, i don't know actually i know the movie was mm-hmm. obviously because all, all the movements are very cartoony in yeah, those probably cinematics not, it's so. just the voice mm-hmm. if you get some solid voice actors man you can make it look as cool as you want it to look mm. and then the other big thing they announced for during the wow panel was well it's, it was the ceremony not the panel but mm. uh they're bringing back classic vanilla wow which people but that were actually there. I was watching on the virtual ticket. People lost their minds. Too. I bet, man. Um, because that's where it all started. That's where WoW started. You know, when it first came out, I think back in oh one or oh three or something. That's incredible. Yeah, it's this game's been out for over twenty years. I think. I like how they revealed it. Or the, how they just had the franchise all those, in general. Uh, cinematics from the expansions play in reverse all the way back to the like, what you described as the very first trailer for the game. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah, it like rewinds all through time mm-hmm. that ends up with that first trailer where the dwarf is walking up the mountain with his, his pet. Yeah. And uh, I, I just like I follow a lot of people that play Destiny or Blizzard games and whatnot. And people are just really excited to go back to that point because yeah. it's nostalgic for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the, you know, millions and millions of people have played WoW, and, you know, they remember those days. You're so one I, of them. I, yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing. I, did, I kind of picked up the game when Vanilla was ending and Burning Crusade was coming out the first expansion. Okay. So I don't have those nostalgic feelings for that period. But at the same time, I'm excited to go back and maybe try and experience those, like, to feel things how they were back then. Right. Because you can't really do that now because they changed the world. I was going to say... 
World of Warcraft is not out of the out of the question for me at all. There may indeed come a day okay. where I'm like, man, I kind of am in the mood for an MMO, and why would I not play the one that's like regarded as one of the best of all? It's time? my it's my favorite story of all time too. I've always wanted to really get into it. I, I in today's world, it's probably unrealistic for me to say like, oh, I'm going to get into World of Warcraft heavily one day. I highly doubt it, but I'd love to go back and experience it for at least a little while. Yeah, it's it's definitely an experience. Like it's my favorite story of all time because it's always ongoing. Mm-hmm. It's never ended. Like every other, you know, like if you watch War of the Lord of the Rings, it's like this is really epic and great. But you know, there's a beginning and an end. I can't if I come back to it, I know it's already going to yeah. happen again. That's that's probably why so many people continue to play it and love it is because it just feels like something that like you said continually yeah. continually it's exists the power of an and it's always going to be there yeah. and that's why so. wow is so grand and epic i feel like because it's just it's so large like mm-hmm. nothing is as big as that game and it's so many expansions it's it's almost endless the amount of things you yeah. can do even as a as someone who i can't i can't say i'm a fan but someone who's just just generally interested in world of warcraft those cinematics get even me hyped up and i don't even play the game yeah. <laughs> that's how effective blizzard is with their marketing and their promotion i mean how could you not get excited about that yeah so cool but uh, yeah, that's that was the meat of BlizzCon for me. But there, obviously, there's tons of esports events going on and whatnot. Right. So today's the second day of the event and the last day of the event. So. Cool. Really uh, cool uh, vibe there as well as far as the decoration mm-hmm. of the place. I saw a lot of cool yeah. statues and cosplay. Yeah, and they completely cool. max out Anaheim Convention Center. <laughs> Are you at all interested in that Hearthstone expansion? It looks cool. Um, they added like a new game type where it doesn't matter how many cards you've bought it. It's like randomly generated and you, I think you fight eight bosses or something. It's like a boss run, but you like the cards you get, I think you unlock more cards as you keep playing. It's, okay. it's weird. You'd have to look into it. That's why I'm hesitant to jump into expansions for Hearthstone. Yeah, because I don't play it enough behind. to, yeah, I'm way far behind. I you never almost bought have any to of them. buy cards to kind of enjoy that game. That's what I'm afraid of because I really, really love Hearthstone, but I don't want to have to like work really hard just to get to a point where I can compete again. Yeah. They've also been releasing like little new heroes for each class. Nice. Yeah, but so same like abilities, just different heroes. Yeah. So like Jaina Proudmore, for example, you could play it like a different. I think you played the mage that was in the Warcraft movie. I forgot his name. Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. Okay. He's another option. That young kid, that guy. Well, he's older. Okay. Yeah, but it's that guy. Yeah. Let's move on, though. Yeah, let's do it. What else? We're running out of time here. Uh, Sam Harris is going to bring us into the next segment. Oh, boy. Sam Harris says, hey, numbskulls. Wow. I'm a little offended now. Yeah. Uh, Paris Games Week uh, revealed a few new trailers for some upcoming Sony titles. However, some of them were missing. For example, Days Gone, Death Stranding, etc. With these games being absent, what does that mean? Will they show up at PSX or the next E3? Love to hear your thoughts. It means they're all canceled. Yeah, yeah. they're canceled. That's Time to panic. Means. You know what's funny about Days Gone? I've had this weird feeling ever since the Star Wars thing. I'm like, something tells me like Days Gone is like something's not going right with that game. I don't know why it, why I feel that way. I don't feel that way. Maybe I'm just I'm losing my mind. I actually liked what they showed at E3. Oh, me too. I'm very excited for it, but oh. something tells me something's like... I think it might going have just on with that been game. that they wanted to show Last of Us and didn't want to show oh, both I, I, of those I, games. As far as it show. being absent, I wasn't I wasn't expecting to see anything more anyway. Yeah, again, I, again I with either. PSX, especially you know. Death Stranding at no. Paris Games Week. No game now Game Awards. I think it'll be there. Death Stranding. Yeah, definitely. Since uh, Jeff, cause Jeff's Jeff there. And, uh, the oh yeah, yeah. that's love, a good point. Love right. for each other there. Did they show anything last year? Yeah, they did. They did. It was that they, was the last thing we saw. That was the trailer week. with the guy from Casino Royale and mm-hmm. Hannibal yep. and stuff. That was the last thing we saw. And Guillermo the, del Toro mm-hmm. with the baby in the tube. Yep. Mm-hmm. A lot of babies. I don't know if you keep saying this, but apparently Emma Stone's somehow related to I keep this hearing project. that. I don't oh, know really? who's saying it. That'd be interesting. I listen to a lot of podcasts. She's reprising her role as Gwen Stacy mm. in uh, Death Stranding. Gotcha. Okay, mm-hmm. that's cool. Um, uh, so let's talk about. I have, I have a bunch of bullet points for like the biggest things we saw. If you, okay. if you want me to just run through them, we'll talk about them individually. Yeah, well, just to address this question, I think that's why Death Stranding wasn't there. And I don't think Days Gone was there because they had something the last of us there. Absolutely. Days Gone will make an appearance at PSX, no doubt. I believe so. Even if it's just a trailer. Yeah. I'd actually like to get a sense of what, this, what the story is in this game. I don't know if I'm excited for that game. Days Gone? Yeah. I'm excited just because. I like the setting. I know we've been to a setting like that n- numerous times, but I think it just looks pretty solid. I think what's attracting me most is the horde of the 
what are they called? Freakers. freakers. Yeah, the freakers. hordes of freakers, how you can interact or manipulate the environments. Like just the simple example we've had. I'm sure there's multiple examples in the game where you can break that gate and they all come flooding in. That's super cool to me. I like that and that it takes place in Oregon, which I think is cool. And I like uh, just the biker gang. And there's like freaker animals. Too I hope, I hope the you. game runs well. That's my fear because I, I have a original PS4 still. So I hope like... I mean, did the Horizon run up. well for you? I don't see why this one was. Uh, it's just with all those freakers, I guess, just on the screen. This I mean, I don't think they're going to put it in the game if it doesn't run destroys well. the, the yeah. PlayStation. I guess you're right. It should be all right. Just know. put it on PC, no problems, right? There you go. Uh, Sucker Punch's new game has officially been revealed. Not at all what I was expecting. Mm. Were Ghost expecting? of Shishuma. Shushima. Shushima. Su- Shushima. Shushima. Ghost Shushima. of Shushima. <laughs> That's how you say it properly. Oh, yeah. okay. In a Japanese slash English accent. Oh. Or if you were, if you saw Godzilla in the distance, uh, <laughs> that's how they say. Son of a bitch. That's how they say Godzilla, <laughs> but Ghost of Tsushima. Very interesting trailer. Yeah, yeah. I'm very uh, intrigued by. Oh, I'm what excited. This is. It's open world, probably stealth ninja game. Oh, dude, like, are it's you like kidding it's me? like what people have been asking yeah. for for Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed for years. Yeah, yeah. but Sucker Punch will this. probably do it better. I'm. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm. Yeah. I'm all over this. It sounds so sure. cool, man. So. I love the trailer too. Yeah. It looks gorgeous. I don't know what else to say other than yeah, I love yeah. the setting. It was just a reveal. Uh, the time period, it sounds great. Mm, just completely different from what we're totally. used to from them. So, mm-hmm. very excited. God of War got a new uh, very brief gameplay Yeah, I was kind of disappointed I didn't see a little more. I mean, it looks amazing, but it's just unnecessary. Mm-hmm. I didn't just like, oh, that. he's fighting some more guys. Cool. Yeah. I will say it looked Give a little more fast-paced than previous the whole, like, gameplay snippet. The whole axe seen. thing coming back to his hand was cool. It's mm-hmm. like, just you know, the Thor. Give me the release date, please. Mm-hmm. Yes. We just. I, I think they said, early, see, they said early 2018. Early 2018 yeah. yeah. I just. I don't want to see anything else. Are we calling February or March for this game? I think March. March. Okay. I'm going to say the first two weeks of March is going to fall somewhere in there. I'll give you ten okay. bucks if it's not March. All right. How about we just well, uh, go to T Bell instead? Will you bet against that? I'll bet against it. Sure, I'll bet against I'll it. I'll take too. the mods. Okay. So if it's not in March, you owe me and Garrett ten dollars. I'm not going to give you both ten dollars. Okay, I'll give you both $10. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we're making this bet, I whatever. Either. I won't even hold we'll you to it. Happens. It's just kind of fun. Oh, I'll hold him to it. I'll take your $10. Okay. okay. I'll take 20 How do we feel How about, about that? I uh, you both like Taco Bell. Sounds good. That's sounds cool. Good. $10 yeah. of Taco sounds Bell. Better. Sure. You know, all of this is relying on God of War. Yeah. Yep. So, Mark Santa Monica really better pull through for your sake. Yeah. We'll they see. Will. Uh, Spider-Man's cinematic trailer. Yes. I was not expecting to get a trailer like I that. I wasn't either. Mm-hmm. What'd you think? I loved it. I think I'm I'm so excited. I'm so man. excited for this game. Yeah, me too. Like, holy crap! I, I see a lot of people complaining about the look of Peter Parker. I was going to say that. I thought he looks fine. Yeah, I, I, I didn't get that good. at all. Yeah, so, I don't know. Whatever, man. Got to <laughs> complain about stuff then. Right? A lot of emphasis on Mister Negative. Yeah. Have yeah. We, didn't someone say he's not the main? villain? He's not the main villain, but he's really not. If he's that's what I've heard, but I don't think they really want to show. I mean, they showed Shocker, which right. was I was so excited when mm-hmm. I saw that. We know Kingpin, Shocker, and Mister Negative are in here. I think Green Goblin will make an appearance just because Norman Osborn is mm-hmm. in the game. Even if it is Mister Negative, I don't care. Like, no, me neither. As long as cool. we get other villains, I, I really want yeah. Arkham style, where it's like, oh, uh, Scorpion's a- attacking a bank. Like, go take oh, care I'm of sure. him. Sure, I mean that's a, that's you what it looked like. Shocker was doing. Right. Was you think bank. my boy Venom will be in this game? No. I don't think he will. Why not? I don't think so. I think there might be a reference but to him. But he's so great. I think he'll be Why mentioned. He, he seems he's like sequel material. Yeah, he, he, it's going to be a reference kind of how... Uh, you Scarecrow- think this game's going to get a sequel? Yes. No doubt, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, th- this will, I keep. I love touching your shoulder, Jacob. It is so beefy. I'm sorry. I this game is going to sell like yeah. crazy. Like hotcakes? Yeah. It, it helps me uh, think when I squeeze your... Uh, what's this muscle called? You're an expert. The... Uh... The, the, the dorsimus no <laughs> dorsimus the morpheus excuse the me the deltoid the deltoid that's oh. what it is uh i think venom will have a lot of uh, one or two easter eggs in the game same with carnage like if, for example in arkham city you can find uh what's his name something crane scarecrow mm-hmm. whenever we do the podcast I can't remember names but you come across a ship that where he had like been storing yeah. drugs or something mm-hmm. i think there might be like in a dark alley somewhere like it may be in a lab at some point there's some kind of Reference to I'll Venom. agree with that, but I don't think, think Venom as a whole, or maybe he is. Maybe that's the big surprise, or something. Do you guys just not like that would be kind of cool if it was a big surprise. No, I love Venom. I'd love for Venom to be in there. But I'd love him to come out of nowhere if you're just like yeah. it's a short cut scene and you're like crawling on a wall and all of a sudden he just like reaches around a corner and like throws you across the street or something. Yeah. I think cool. Venom's too big for them to hide him as like mm-hmm. a massive because that's like the biggest, this a huge villain for Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, how do you feel about getting to play as Mary Jane? That's fine. 
What do you think? What I couldn't tell what you're supposed to are you like investigating Maybe, things? Maybe yeah, Spider investigating gene? things. I'm, try, I'm trying to think of like I mean I haven't played it, so I'm not gonna judge. Oh no, it, it kind of looks to... like how Telltale Batman's take on other characters were different. Maybe that's the case with this game. Whereas maybe Mary Jane is more entwined with Spider Man, you know, like it seems working like working alongside. Yeah, him. it seems like she's. Oh no, they're older. I was about to say they're still in high school, mm -hmm. but uh, no, it seems like she's more. You know, maybe she's you know investigating things while he's out. You know what I think would be stuff. a really cool introduction to the game. I think it'd be cool if you start out as like Peter when he's only been Spider Man for like a couple months, and it kind of introduces you to the mechanics, and you kind of have to save Mary Jane, and one thing leads to another, and she kind of figures out who you are, and that's when it like progresses further in the story. I think it'd be a fun opening, have like a more classic Spider Man suit at the beginning, that of course you can unlock later in the game, but maybe it introduces the mechanics through like when they're kid, like teenagers still. Mm. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I just I would, I'd like to see more gameplay. But. People are speculating if we'll get to play as Miles Morales. And if he'll Maybe. become, uh, is it Ultimate Spider-Man? No, he's just Spider-Man. He becomes Spider-Man when Peter Parker dies, I'm pretty right, sure. Right, right. But uh, in, I think his run is called, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong because there's so many different Spider-Man runs mm -hmm. now. I think it's called Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man. No, Ultimate's when it's still Peter Parker yeah. and Amazing's Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. I think he's is it being Superior? A... Or is that when Doc Ock takes over Peter Parker's brain? I have brain? no clue. I can't remember. I just thought he was Spider-Man. Yeah, I think he had, maybe he has a specific title in his. I'm just thinking of the comic book, right? I don't. I hope not. I like. I just like Peter. I, that, I'm not into the comics and stuff, so I would be t kind of bummed if he like died at the end of this game and Miles took over. Yeah, Miles Morales's oh. costume will be in the game, okay. no doubt. Oh yeah, yeah that's cool. Mm -hmm. I think Miles will have an important part in like the game and the story, but I don't think he'll be. I'm Spider sure. I think it's cool. It looks like him and Peter are like hanging out in this game. Yeah. So. That's cool. Building, I just want to. I want a release date and a little bit more game. Just some gameplay. I want to see some free roam stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe like a developer diary. Like, okay, we're gonna swing over here and yeah. I'll show you what how the side missions work I in this game. That. Blah, maybe blah, blah, maybe blah. we'll get that at PSX. Yeah, I'd love I would, that. I would love to see that because I know they're they're improving the swing speed based mm -hmm. on feedback. So that's I want deeper that swinging too because when we saw that demo, it looked really good, but they kind of stayed at like the same uh, altitude the entire time. I'd like mm -hmm. them to see some like really deep swings to the city. I know people. some people mention that. I've always liked that a lot in Spider-Man. Hmm. I want to slingshot myself into the air, dive bomb, shoot a web, and do like a huge swing up back into the air. I love that. I don't know. It looks, it, <laughs> it looks outstanding, though. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, more. from what I've seen, I'm just extremely excited. So Still that I'm 2018 sure be, tag on it. I'm sure it'll be either summer or holiday of 2018. Yeah, really seems so. like I'm going to bet on fall or holiday for sure. Mm-hmm. As long as we see the tiniest bit of PSX and we'll undoubtedly see probably a, a big demo at E3 next year. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I don't know. Hopefully it's out before E3. I'd like that. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for uh, to attend the Sony E3 press conference next year. Wow. That'd be awesome. That'd be so cool. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Far Cry 5's co-op trailer came out. Mm -hmm. I, I was just thinking of you and I how much fun we had in Far Cry 4's yeah. co-op that I think this will be a blast. Well, I think it would. So we can't blow up any more elephants. <laughs> I know. <laughs> or exactly. pile 30 bo bodies on. We can find can a cow or something and <sighs> launch him to the moon. Yeah, so that was amazing. I didn't look at the Far Cry 5 stuff. Is there anything cool about the co-op? Uh, I think it's cool because I think they said you can just go on missions to get. Okay, remind me, it was the co-op dialed back in far cry 4 could you only do certain you could only things? do hunting and side missions okay you couldn't do campaign missions or anything. now you can do that in far cry 5 now can you is that no the vibe clue. i got i didn't watch it okay i have literally no interest in this game i don't know interest no wow dude i'm very interested Zero. i i just love far cry's gameplay the only reason i pick it up is because it gets good reviews mm -hmm. yeah i'm once it gets closer there's just so much stuff right now and it's yeah. so far I can't away even think that about I, it right yeah now. that's just the last thing on my mind right i just i think it's when i saw that i was just reminded of uh how much fun you and I had in Far Cry 4, even though it was pretty limited how much fun mm -hmm. we had in Far Cry 4's co-op, so I'd like to do that in 5. I enjoyed yeah. 3 a lot more than 4, for whatever reason. I liked 3 more than 4 overall, but... I think it was it was just so new. Mm -hmm. It was different. Far Cry 4 looked so samey, and this one kind of looks samey too, which it does. is... But well, you can go fun. fishing. That's cool. You can fly a, a, a biplane. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. I'm excited, personally. Uh, you can play as Aloy in Monster Hunter World. Excellent. Pretty cool. Makes it a day one purchase for me. Yeah, absolutely. That makes two of us. Speaking of Horizon, uh, Horizon's Frozen Wilds DLC trailer. Got another look at it. I think there's actually a playthrough on YouTube now from someone. I think you're... The whole thing? 
not i don't know if it's the whole thing it's like a it's like 15 minutes okay i didn't watch the trailer. <laughs> which is the the uh, extent of the dlc it's yeah. 15 minutes long <laughs> i didn't watch the trailer or anything i don't want to okay. see anything yeah it looks awesome and there's it's, there's a new creature called like the inferno or something it looks like the ravagers yeah, it looks similar to the Ravagers. Mm. I gotta refresh. I'll have to go through my little journal and refresh myself. With the names I'm gonna have to the just play robots. the game to get accustomed to it. Yeah, I'll have to get the feel for it. This again. is gonna I sound hope. so snobby, but oh no, I've already talked about this. Never mind. What? Just 30 frames per second is just just insane. How weird it feels now. Yeah. Like playing Assassin's Creed and dropping it to 30 and back and forth. It's mm -hmm. like insane how. 30 you know when i was playing so many at 30 that was just so normal so i've ruined myself so hopefully i think i just need to hop back into horizon for a day or two early just so i get accustomed yeah, i'm kind of nervous about hopping back in i don't know how to do anything anymore me neither eh, i mean was, i was i know squares roll i remember that right i mean I, I was a total warrior in that game by the end because it just felt so natural but yeah. i don't remember anything now so i'm sure it'll be easy did, did you remember. get the armor both of you? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I platinumed the game, bro. We all platinumed it, didn't mm -hmm. we? Yeah. You platinumed it too, right, Jacob? Of course. Yeah. Wow. We Solid all platinum. three platinum. Is that the first yeah. time we've all platinumed a game? We all platinum Fallout 4, right? Yeah. yeah. What about That's a little the surprising. order? Did you do the order? I did. Okay. Did you do the order? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, we're so, we're so great. Yeah. Did you all hear about the Sony rewards for trophies? No. Mm -mm. So if you sign up for Sony rewards, trophies will give you points that you can turn in for money. 10 platinums is $10 PlayStation gift card. Really? Yeah. So I oh, was crap. looking at my, I have over 40 platinums. So I was thinking, holy shit, I'm going to get game. $40. And then I logged in and they were like, no, it's from this point forward. Uh, what you oh, do. come on. Yeah. I'm like, uh, yeah, that pissed me off. So no reason to chase me. Well, right yeah, now, even more of an incentive to do it now because you literally get paid. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's <laughs> literally an incentive. It's like I, the, I would just disregard the past three, four years of me getting them. Oh, so it was what all about money for you. What a waste. <laughs> well, it, that's just a cool <laughs> reward. I could have bought. Uh, that's still not a lot for me playing all these games for no. like three, four years to not even be able to buy a game. But it would have been oh, cool. Sorry, sorry you've had so much fun playing these games, Preston. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was only doing it for the eventual reward I knew I would get. <laughs> uh, Destiny 2's Curse of Osiris DLC got a trailer. Wow, we man. saw Osiris so in action, cool. man. So that was a cool sick. trailer. Did y'all not cool. think it was cool? Yeah. It was a cool I trailer. Was I, cool. I like the look of him. Yeah, it'd be interesting Osiris. if we could get. <laughs> it'd be cool if we get some uh, some headgear on our guardians that kind of like his, where you can see his eyes, because you never really see your character's face when you have your helmet on. It'd be cool if they had a helmet that actually shows part of your character's face like that. Be cool if we could get some more content in Destiny Two. That'd also be cool. I think it'd be cool too. Yeah. I'll mention that when I'm there on Thursday. Isn't that the point of this DLC, Jacob? Yeah, I hope so, right? <laughs> That's what I'm holding out for. I'm, 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 I'm hoping, do. I'm like, wow, this is great. Like, I, I really need to pick it up on PC now, because I think it's on, great on PC, but again, like you said, there isn't a whole lot to do. I just can't see myself doing all that grinding again. Mm -hmm. That's that's why I haven't picked it up yet. But the thing is, is Osiris raises your power level, so if you just continue on with that story, yep. you're just getting all the new stuff that you would be getting anyways with your old character. Mm -hmm. That is true. So... I'm just saying the I time to jump in so you don't have to grind everything. I know, but I just, I'm just not having a lot of fun doing it again. Okay, well then that's a whole completely yeah. different issue. That's just what I'm saying. <laughs> I think the DLC does look interesting. I'm gonna, I'm obviously going to play it, but, you know. Okay. It's not like what I'm most excited for this holiday season. Likewise. You guys have any interest in Guacamelee 2? Uh, no. I played the uh, really decent amount of the first game, and it's really good. Wasn't it free one month on PlayStation? Yeah, it was. I, bought, I have it I actually bought it, it. I just haven't played it yet. On Vita, and Seems I had like a, a lot of fun. Game. It's bought from Drinkbox. I They're forgot great. Vita was a thing ever since Switch um, came out. I'm pretty sure this one's just coming to PS4. Oh, their Drinkbox's game Severed is on Switch. That's great. Oh, yeah, I saw it on the, on the store game. recently. It's a great game. It's cool. So... I like them a lot. Guacamelee was fun, but I I just don't really care for for it enough to be excited about the sequel. I understand. Uh, Blood and Truth, similar to the London Heist VR game, yeah, is coming to PSVR. It looks pretty cool. It does. It looks really cool. I I'd really liked to, London Heist. I'd love to stealth around in VR. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, London Heist. That's what I it was. I mean, it's not my favorite experience anymore. But when I first played, it, I'm like, wow, this is outstanding. I'd love mm -hmm. a full game like this. Yeah. So it seems like that's what we're getting. Looks cool. Very exciting. Uh, Detroit. 
How do you feel about that brief demo slash trailer? It, it stirred a bunch of controversy. I dude, it was, the subject matter is I was, very heavy. That's yeah. what's so funny but, is that uh, I didn't even notice there was controversy until like days after, and I was so confused yeah, as to that why. Yeah, that and The Last of Us sparked right. some controversy, but uh, I, I really want to play that game. Yeah. As do I. I'm Spring 2018. Yeah. Finally, we have an idea of when it's coming. Very Pretty nice. sure Greg Miller said this on the Games Daily Show, but mm -hmm. this game is very easy. Like it's great for trailers because of all the different scenarios that yeah. they've created. Because mm -hmm. I was unaware. Because when I first saw the original Detroit demo, at least from when I first saw it in action, when you're playing as that detective or whatever mm -hmm. who invest or interrogates the guy in the rooftop with the little girl, I thought it was going to focus around that character the entire game. I didn't it realize it was going to bounce people. around to different characters. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, it's definitely a game. I think me and my wife are gonna. Yeah. Sit down and play with each other. Oh, I keep sure. forgetting you're married. Yep. <laughs> Every time you say, me and my wife, I'm like thrown off for a second. It's going to be weird too when Zach's married in the very near future. Yeah. My wife and I are going to come over for a barbecue. Wait, what? <laughs> Two of my uh, best friends are going to be married soon. Man. You, you and I might as well tie the knot, Jacob, and join the club. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Is oh, this happening? This is great. Right now? Maybe next episode. We're going to do oh, okay. great. <laughs> yeah. uh, Shadow of the Colossus is coming February 6th of 2018. Uh -huh. That think, looks really pretty. I think I might play it, uh, this version of it, because I never finished the original mm -hmm. version. If I'm going to play it again, I might as well play the remastered yeah, version. I've never played this, and I would like to. Yeah. Apparently, the controls are the exact same, which yeah, I was too What the heck? Good. Why? Yeah. I played it on the PlayStation 3 version, and yeah, it's different. Did you play The Last Guardian? Did you play it? No. Yeah, the controls are weird. Did you ever finish Last Guardian? I didn't. I didn't. It was really good, though, up until, yeah. like, the story was that getting really interesting up to when I started. Something came out, and I kind of got uh, distracted. But, yeah, the controls are a little odd, but within 30 minutes of you playing, it feels normal. So, I don't know why people get so upset with the control scheme. Because I remember playing Shadow of the Colossus, and I got, I was a kid, and I got a couple of guys in, and it was, I didn't even think about the controls, so... I was just confused as a kid. I killed the first Colossus or whatever, mm -hmm. and I was like, what now? I thought I'd like beat it or something. <laughs> I was, was like so confused. But, so. Uh, I mean, it, they should. It's It's been critiqued enough, and enough people have said it needs to be changed to where they probably yeah, should. Yeah, with modern controls, make. they could be yeah. outstanding. Yeah. So, oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Let's I mean, talk about... Oh, wait, sorry, there's, there's still, I'm just saying there's still time for them to change it. Yeah, we'll know? see. Um or at least have the option to pick which one. It's Absolutely. Sure. Mm -hmm. Legacy controls or normal controls. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Uh, let's talk about the Last of Us 2 trailer. Yeah. I will say it's funny because when it first started, I was watching on my phone and I had very poor connections. because I was in the middle of a class. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I couldn't tell, quality wise, I couldn't tell exactly what, I, I couldn't determine if it was di di days, days Gone or The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. And I knew it was The Last of Us the moment they lift up the girl's shirt and her stomach looks so real. I'm like, that's Naughty Dog for sure. Yeah, <laughs> the graphics were too yeah. good to be Days Gone. As soon as I saw how realistic her muscles were moving on her stomach when they put oh. the blade up to it, I was like, that's 100% Naughty Dog. So. Yeah. That's when I knew it was Last of Us, and then I was interested, like, well, who are these people? So, yeah, like you, I also watched this on my phone in the car in the sun, so I probably yeah. get the best experience. I actually haven't re watched it with audio yet. Oh, really? I've just oh, seen wow. the, the cinematic. I've yeah, watched it to. like four times. Okay, so um, now I know that on Twitter they released not only the characters' names, but mm -hmm. that the people who are playing these characters. Yeah. So I, I can't think of off the top of my head who they are, but people are speculating already that the woman who was about to be hung is Ellie's mother. Oh, yeah. it definitely a thousand mm -hmm. percent is. Especially when they're like, oh, she's whatever they say about she's they pregnant had, or whatever. They, yeah, and they said Laura Bailey as block, Blank. block, 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 yeah. four letters. Mm -hmm. Ellie's mom's name was Anna. Right. One, two, three, four. That's got to be her. So again, people are speculating it's going to be a good old fashioned like Uncharted type storytelling where it's the past back to the present here's the past yeah. again back to the present so how do yeah. you feel about that in terms of storytelling in last Great. of us 2 cool okay. anything i'm up for whatever now <laughs> i'm only again i'm only speculating you gotta wonder how that will serve joel and ellie's story mm -hmm. like ellie like well this is where ellie came from but does that really matter in, in the context context of the present like mm -hmm. how will that affect the present storyline the past uh, if it didn't really have anything to do with the first game how mm -hmm. will it explain why ellie's I, new? Think I don't know ellie learns how what happened to her mom mm -hmm. and i think that's what she's talking about and she's gonna trailer. go kill everyone yes you are dead on with that i, I think, think so. you're right that's my mm -hmm. hypothesis i think you're totally correct so because clearly they're going to have 
you know, something to do with each other. Definitely. So. Now, is her mother confirmed to be dead in the first game? I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay. Hmm. That'd be I interesting. I think so. I think so. Maybe. I'd have to replay it, which yeah. I will definitely replay it before the sequel yeah. comes out. I don't, I don't remember, you know, too much about her mom. Just, I know mm-hmm. her name and something happened. I know that she worked with the Fireflies or something with Maureen okay. or whatever. Clipper wings, smash her arm with a hammer. Yeah, I was so, I, I thought that the camera was going to go away at that point. That was and brutal, when it stayed, man. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I also appreciate that. Yeah. A, a lot of people did not, or mm-hmm. some people did a lot of articles like Polygon released an article saying how something along the lines of it was promoting violence towards women or something like that. So dumb, dude. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, whatever it, it, it definitely was intense. And uh, out of context, I can see how just feel some random person seeing this. It just it totally. Might, like, I, I get that. For the sake of violence. Violent. So mm-hmm. there, there are arguments for that, and I you know agree with. Mm-hmm. Just me personally, I knew it was the Last of Us, so right. I kind of knew what we were walking into. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, in terms of gameplay, I'm sure that a uh, hammer is going to come. Is going to be like her mom, like her, like her stealth we're, weapon. If we're playing or her, or totally. Something. Did you see the poster that was released a while ago with the, the arm, with the arm, the arm hammer. with the hammer? Yeah. So it, they're definitely promoting that hammer, especially mm-hmm. just based on the shot. Totally. At the very end, where it just kind of had it in focus. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's going to be an impact. Her mom was jacked. Her. Yeah, too. she's freaking like, <laughs> they're crap, like dude. The chat I was in, they were like, like, damn, uh, Ellie's mom is swole. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Very excited to, to see oh, yeah. more from so that. So excited. Do you I, think we'll see anything at PSX in addition to I that? don't know, because that was what I was betting on. I had no clue. I, TGS seemed too small to yeah to do not tgs PGS, or paris games week yeah or pgw i'd like to see nothing until e3 next year where we get a gameplay reveal i think game i think gameplay makes the most sense at e3 next year but i, I think at the very least it'd be cool to see Druckmann and maybe someone else sit down to just chat about maybe that trailer yeah, they might specifically have a panel. i know there was a little interview that he released where he vaguely talked about it but it seems more like at this psx they might do more days gone stuff mm-hmm. um that game might even be released by the next e3 yeah maybe knows? maybe that's what they're holding out for it's just the big psx uh mm. thing or event is because i, just, I just can't well i would be i would love for them to do this but i just i wouldn't bet on them showing this cutscene and then in like a however long it is another here's some more here's their gameplay that yeah, just seems way that too either. close to each other isn't detroit also scheduled for like early 2018 yes yeah, spring. spring so that would be yeah. three games before you i know that might yeah, be yeah, too yeah. much but that's uh, i mean they got to show Days Gone again at some point. Yeah, Sony could have a... So. I mean, not, not saying that this will happen, but Sony could have a killer opening of 2018 just like they did in uh, 2017 if they had Days Gone, God of War, in Detroit at the beginning of the year. Spider-Man later on that Holy year. Holy crap, man. Goodness. Unstoppable. Yeah. It's a lot of good... I mean, they got to put these content. games out at some point. Yeah. You know? So, I'd be fine with that. Mm-hmm. I'd be all over that. That'd be great. But, yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited nonetheless. Definitely. PS Plus games for November. Speaking of PlayStation, none of these excite me. R Type Dimensions for PS3. Ragdoll Kung Fu Fists of Plastic for PS3. <laughs> wow. That's <laughs> a game I developed myself. Ah. Dungeon Punks for PlayStation Vita, cross by with PS4. Broken Sword 5 The Serpent's Curse, episodes 1 and 2 for Vita. Broken Sword 5. Yeah, 5. Whoa. Jeez. Don't know what any of that is. According to Reese Puggetschew of NerdMuch.com, PUBG is coming to the Xbox preview program as a console launch exclusive, keyword there, on December 12th. Now, version 1.0 will launch for both Xbox and PC in late December, so it will officially leave early access. Nice. I mean, this will undoubtedly make it to PS4 eventually. Maybe. Un- definitely will. Console launch exclusive, that's the keyword there. Maybe. So, um, will it be a year? Will it be multiple years? Will it be six months? I don't know. Maybe at E3 next year, PUBG Corp will be like, guess what? It's coming to PS4 too. You guys have any intentions of playing it on Xbox? I'm going to try it on Xbox for yeah. fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm, I love You're it. You're going to pay $30 to try it? Yeah, I guess I would have to pay 30 bucks again. <laughs> it's not free to play. Uh, maybe not. I'll, I'll, see what, I'll see what the reception's like, because I think on PC it's phenomenal. So. Yeah. And when I say phenomenal, I know it has its bugs and everything, but I, I, as, as, a, as an experience, I love it on PC. I just can't see myself, if I was to get into that game, like leaving the biggest community for it. You know, I agree. It'd just be kind of weird. Mm-hmm. I think it will you can, thrive on console, though, for sure. I wonder yeah. if they'll make it like controller-supported on the PC. That would be interesting. I think it is. Is it? 
I heard somebody hmm. saying they play with controller. Let us know in the comments if it actually is. It's kind of cool. Because some people just don't like mouse and keyboard, but they want to play a game's you know, best quality they can. I've been slowly collecting PUBG highlights for a stream highlight video over a period of like a month now because we, we hardly stream, but when we can, uh, whenever we do play PUBG and stuff, I've captured a few funny or exciting I've been getting moments. home so late. I've been wanting to you know, boot up a stream, but it's been mm. impossible lately. I think you and I should really do Nazi Zombies Monday or Tuesday. No, I, I am free both Monday and Tuesday cool. night, so we'll do it. Okay. Uh, that brings us to community questions, boys. Thank you to all of you who continue to supply us with amazing questions week in and week out to fuel the conversation in the latter half of the podcast. It's always exciting. Forgive us. Ask IOG may come out this week. I'm not going to promise it, but it might. If we can figure out a day, we could do it. I, oh, wait, I have to go out of town again. It's not happening this week. <laughs> Man, we are seriously, we are total bastards. I'm sorry, but we have outstanding questions to get to for ask IOG when we get there i mean you you guys have fueled us for at least three or four episodes which is amazing so thank you please don't hesitate to continue to see us more or send us more i promise you you are not sending questions into the void i read and collect every single one i have a massive log of all your questions and i'm very excited to get to them but if you want your questions read on either of the shows, whether it be Ask IOG or the podcast you're currently listening to, you can reach us in one of three places. You can email us at itsobviousgaming at gmail.com. You can tweet at us at obvious underscore gaming, or you can submit your questions to the Ask IOG section on our Discord channel using the hashtag Ask IOG so we know you want your questions read on the show. But if you just want to chat, by all means, message us. We always respond. At least I do. I can't speak for you two. What are you talking about? When people just want to like, hey, what's up? How's it going? Like, I'll talk to you guys if you want to talk. I, I respond on Discord. Okay. Sometimes I hit up the YouTube comments. To cool. messages? Yeah. I get messages on PlayStation. Just oh, yeah. People saying, I mean, hey. Yeah, hey, what's up? Well, when saying, I am on I don't PlayStation. Reply to those. So. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, uh, if someone asks me Speaking like, of uh, being cheeky, cheeky as the first question. Continue, mm, Jacob. What? What? What were you going to say? Oh, I was just saying like if someone asks me like a, you know, a a question on playstation i'll like respond to them but, yeah, yeah you know like people always ask me to play i'm like sometimes i'm not in the mood to play you know i just won't if i have the time i love teaming up with yeah. anyone who wants to play like sometimes i'll just be playing like a single player game like people will be wanting to play with me i'm just like no i'm just gonna focus on the campaign yeah right dude now. you're so popular <laughs> F off, Jacob. Cheeky says, <laughs> hope you guys are having a great week. My question is, what happened to taco ball? Uh, <laughs> taco what? balls? I was going to say taco talk, but in the middle of taco talk, it says taco in parentheses, taco bell talk. Uh, so mm. I like that all taco mixed ball. into one word. Taco mm -hmm. balls. What happened to taco talk? It's been missing. We haven't been going to taco bell. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's one, one part of it. We haven't been going to taco bells often. We can't get together. Today, we had to start a little earlier than normal. I don't want to go to taco bell at 11 in the morning. It's a little too early for lunch. For well, it depends on how early I wake up. If I wake up around 8 or 9, by 11, I'm ready to eat lunch. But That's today, thing, like, today uh, I woke up at 1030. I so. need a big breakfast. We need to start a campaign. If you have a Twitter, tweet at Taco Bell. Say, let's get y'all involved with this obvious gaming. And let's do an entire Taco Bell sponsored Taco Talk. All right. We'll just do, we'll do a Taco Bell podcast for you, yeah, Taco the Bell. the whole time. So let them know this is what the fans demand. We'll announce a new Taco Bell video game. I want a reaction to like the, the Damn Daniel thing where Ellen DeGeneres or Vans gave Damn Daniel like a, a lifetime supply of white Vans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I want Taco Bell to be like, man, these guys promote us so much that we need to uh, give them a we lifetime have, supply We have, we Bell. have, it might be point oh 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 to infinity one percent of profits that we have driven towards Taco yeah, we've Bell. Converted a lot we of have done, we have made them some money. Converted a few people to the face <laughs> I've seen of Taco at least Bell. 50 people post pictures in our Discord of yeah. Taco Bell. Yeah. And Taco we, Bell is a wonderful we have establishment. Gained, we have got yeah. you some money, Taco Bell. So. And uh, we, sometimes we leave it out. Not, it isn't like a conscious decision. We just straight up forget sometimes, but it's also because we more often than not eat the same things every week. So it's mm -hmm. like, guess what? I had the same thing again. I went to, <laughs> I went to Taco Bell on Wednesday and I'm I'm still getting the crispy chicken quesadilla. I yeah, tried it. Good. And it's the bomb. Dude. Yeah. It's I pretty good, it. but I still love my steak quesadilla. Okay, Garrett. I like to do new stuff because it's gone soon. <laughs> I did and try it. And then I'll though. reminisce on the crispy the chicken quesadilla times. a year later and mm. it'll be gone. It really was good, though. You I like it. always have your steak, okay? I love my let, taco Let him steak. enjoy his crispy chicken. Mm -hmm. I'm not a chicken man when it comes to Mexican food. Which is mind-blowing. No, I, I will take that back. Some places I like it. Like, for example, El Felix Chicken Tacos. Mm -hmm. Amazing. But uh, not a Taco Bell. You don't Taco like Bell's chicken tacos, is good. I believe it. I've I had it before. say great, but good popped out. Grud. Grud. It's Just grud. like Taco Balls. Yep. 
You don't like fish tacos, do you? I like fish tacos. I've had fish tacos that are good. Okay, that surprises me because mm-hmm. I know you're not like It depends on where I get guy. them. No, I hate seafood, but I, I, I love enjoy seafood. a fish taco. I you didn't like seafood. Marlo's Tavern. No, I like it. You don't like Italian. I don't hate Italian. I just think it's overrated. Oh, mm. Shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. I, Marlo's Tavern has good fish tacos. I've never had them. They're great. Mm. I, I haven't been to Marlo's in a while. I could go for some Marlo's. Okay. You know, the, the item I get from Marlo's is a considered a secret menu item now because they removed it from the menu but they'll still make it if you ask is it, it is the, the buffalo chicken wrap buffalo, yeah i was gonna say mm, they still make it mm, mm, delicious mm. excellent yeah craig hatch says excuse me my community oh yeah this is, has to do with taco talk as well he says my community question is more of an upsetting statement i live in rainy england and we only have a handful of taco bells in the country the closest one to me is a long two-hour drive from my country whoa yeah only a handful he says the closest one to me is a long two-hour drive from my town hearing you lads need to move yeah (laughs) hearing you lads mention taco bell in a uh, weekend and week out has left me and left me uh, a massive craving for your favorite fast food chain i love how people in europe spell favorite in color yeah <laughs> that's how you know <laughs> it's a dead giveaway also when they say they're from england but if someone doesn't say where they're yeah, from, that'll do it if they don't say where they're from and they spell a word like this i'm like you're from england <laughs> but a favorite fast food chain that i've only had the pleasure of eating once whilst on a very long shopping trip with my ex-girlfriend i guess i'll making be making the two-hour journey at some point mm. man an hour there and back for taco bell i gotta say man if you that's, get the right items commitment. it is worth the trip yeah. especially if, if you have your boys to go with if you're on a little road trip yeah. with your friends if you gotta get podcasts to listen to oh yeah dude that is totally worth going to taco bell imagine eating your taco bell listening to us talk about taco bell and that'd be a great experience so is it a two-hour drive there Let's see. Let me reread this. This is the close one to my house. Is about oh, a long two-hour drive. So it's a four-hour yeah, journey. Four-hour uh, journey. I don't know it's like it's to Mordor it. and back, <laughs> dude. I'm telling you, if you have good friends to go with, good tunes to listen to, go enjoy some Taco Road Bell. Trip. Like eat inside the Taco Bell. Really enjoy your time there. Get a hotel. Yeah. Head head back, guys. <laughs> Perhaps enjoy the, the restroom while you're there as well. Oh yeah. I mean, you're gonna have to dump after anyway. You don't want to have to dump on the two-hour journey. Yeah. So maybe stick around. Probably hang around for another thirty minutes. <laughs> Appreciate the facilities they have indoors, and yes. then yeah, they'll probably the only have back. one toilet too, so you'll have to take turns. Exactly. Or you can do the trick me and Preston have tried, where I sit on the toilet and then he straddles me and poops in between my legs simultaneously. Okay. It's what, very if you, what if you accidentally like get uh, a boner, dude? What? Yeah, dude. What What are you talking well, not, about? Not that dude. it would happen to one dude, of us. Or what if it just happened? <laughs> dude, that that doesn't happen. It's it, no. we just we're poop. using the bathroom. That's oh, all we that's is. All that's all we it that's do. All. <laughs> but just say you were in the scenario. Could you Could you imagine? There's Taco Bells within like th- a rock throwing distance. Yeah, from pretty us. much everywhere you go in Georgia. Mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine being two hours away. I think of that meme uh, when people tell me heartbreaking stories like this. That meme with the guy the guy in the sand where he's like holding the sand. He's like crying about something. Have you yeah. seen that meme? Where it's like, oh, I left my headphones at home and it shows the guy in the sand. Like, with, like you can tell there's like emotional music playing. That's what I think of. Okay. That's how I'd react if I found out Taco Bell was yeah, nowhere show near me. me this guy in the sand. It's pretty funny. You can probably relate to it. Ren says, hey guys, it's been a bit. What's a game that shocked you by far exceeding your expectations? Breath of the Wild. Don't get me wrong. I didn't think it was going to be bad, but I didn't know it was going to be as good as it was by completely taking over my life for a good couple of weeks. It's the strangest thing with that game. I also adore that game. I know I, I'm like, Horizon's better. I don't think it's better in every way, but when I think about Breath of the Wild, I've played it for close to 90-ish hours, and I feel like I've played it for maybe 10 hours. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know why I feel that way. Mm-hmm. That's The thing is, is that I love that traditional Zelda formula, mm-hmm. so I was a little hesitant going into this game. I did not expect that it would be as good or I would love it as much as I love that game. So it's very rare when a game does that, and I think before this game, Skyrim did that to me. Yeah, I was going to say Skyrim for so, me too. I'll never forget a good one. the way I felt for the first like three weeks playing that game. Mm-hmm. Nothing has matched that yet as far as hype level being exceeded for a yeah. game. Mm-hmm. So even Fallout 4, I, I love Fallout 4, but was not the same feeling I had with playing Skyrim for the first time. I'll say uh, Witcher 3 for me. Oh, I, didn't I was really going to throw I didn't Witcher know what 3 to in there too. going into that game, but uh, mm-hmm. I was completely blown away. Yeah. yeah. Witcher 3 is up there for me. A lot of these open world RPGs. That's the thing, as I knew Witcher 3 was going to just be freaking insane. Mm-hmm. So... um. I'm not going to look around my room. Maybe Mario will be that to me. It could be. I, yeah, I was a, hyped good. for Mario, but I wasn't like... I'm not the biggest Mario fan. Yeah. I've played every 3D Mario game but 
Galaxy 2. This game made me a huge um, Mario fan. No. Dude, if Galaxy comes to the Switch, you've got to play that. Yeah, that game is You can insane. count on me playing it. Galaxy is so good. Which one do you think would come first if they had brought back like one 3D Mario first? What would that be? I think um, it would be Galaxy. It Sunshine, depends if they do 64. virtual console. Well, say they do. If they do virtual console, I want them all at the same time. Okay, take the fun out of it. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I'll tell you a game that far exceeded my expectations. Halo 5's campaign was far worse than I expected it to be. Oh. <sighs> Fan fiction, man. Call well, of Duty it. under exceeded my expectations. So, all Infinite Warfare blew my expectations for the campaign yeah. out of the water. I was, I was not thinking, that thinking the it was going to be there. that good. Yeah. Oh. That, man. Yeah. Campaign's so good. I have like, a lot I of play Call of Duty posters in here. I want to play that again. I'm not a fanboy, I promise. Hopefully, uh, Battlefront 2's campaign far yes, exceeds our expectations. I would love that to happen. We will see. Same with every other game we're excited for. That's what I always hope for. Mm -hmm. Zinian says, Since you're all loving the new Mario so much, and since uh, collectathons are on our minds, have any of you looked into or played a hat in time? I've looked into it. It looks fun. I almost played that at PAX, but uh, my colleague and I had both booked an appointment for it, and we didn't realize that till like a week before. Like, we obviously shouldn't both go to this, so he took that one, and I took something else. Wow. I hear it's really good, though. Yeah. So. I don't really have an interest in it, because I have Mario now. Exactly. So. so. I think the, the funnest collect-a-thon I've had, even more fun than Mario, is collecting uh, flags in Assassin's Creed 2. I loved that so much. What about the Korok you don't seeds? You even collect flags in Assassin's Creed 2. You well, collect feathers. feathers. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I meant. Collecting feathers in Assassin's Creed 2. Are you 2. for real? Yeah. No, you're not. No, absolutely not. Liar. Mario's outstanding. I love it. Carlos Perez says, What's your best and worst Halloween memory? Oh, this is a little late. I don't even have one. Dressing <laughs> up as a red Power Ranger and getting a whole... A lot of candy. Pillowcase full of candy. Mm. I dressed up as a Red Ranger and split my pants when I first got to the place I was going, and my uncle made fun of me the rest of the night. So that's probably my worst wow. memory. <laughs> the Red Ranger is in Stranger Things Season 2. Really? Spoiler! Yeah, thanks a lot. Dude. Can't watch it now. I was thinking Power Rangers the whole time and how much I want Power Rangers to continue with those actors. Are there any actors. callbacks in the show? He's like, oh, I gotta go morph i don't know there's there's been a lot of easter eggs for other properties from like the 80s and stuff that i've really appreciated yeah i still haven't watched it yet i need to watch it mm -hmm. did you watch the whole thing no i'm on episode me and casey just finished episode six i hear episode seven is amazing and i'm assuming that's what people mean when they're like season two is so much better than season one and i've yet to feel that way about season mm -hmm. two i really love season two it's outstanding but i've yet to have that moment where i'm like yeah this is better than season one which a lot of people are saying that. So maybe episode seven and beyond is what pushes that narrative. I've heard people. people say that it's just different. It's definitely different for sure. <gasps> a lot of great character moments. Uh, and we'll talk about Stranger Things later on. I obviously don't want to spoil it, but a lot of great team ups with characters you wouldn't expect to team up here and there that I really enjoy. Specifically Steve and uh, what's the kid's name with the curly hair? I forgot his name. I love their moments oh. together in the show. It's fantastic. Hmm. Uh, best Halloween memory uh, probably just dressing up as Batman getting to be Batman for a night and collecting candy when I was a kid just a reminder it is 3.05pm yes I gotta go very soon I also have to dump my brains out <laughs> such a shame um, worst uh, pretty much the last several Halloweens have been the worst because I've done hardly you anything you haven't really done anything have you no me and, even me and Casey when we hang out with just nothing going on we've been to a couple of Halloween parties that just were totally bogus oh well I've uh yeah, I don't really have like, I don't know. I've never been a huge fan of Halloween, so I just kind of half-assed it. Halloween's my dad's birthday, so I always just have a birthday party on his birthday. Yeah. So not this Halloween though. I didn't even have Halloween this year. Didn't exist. I didn't do anything either. Kind of I was. Uh, what was I doing for Halloween? You were working. I was. I was out at bars. Yeah, Halloween night. I think I was with Casey. I think we did something. No, you. I was with you as well. It was well. a Tuesday night. What were we doing? Oh, never mind. I went to Provito's. Tuesday night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And oh, yeah. Game. We started Stranger Things Halloween night is what we did. Our way, our uh, hostess was wearing a Zaxby's uniform as her uh, costume at Provino's. <laughs> Odd. And I was like, that's a little weird. <laughs> I, uh, I played Mario Halloween night. Cool. 
Uh, this is a quick side note. I saw Killing of a Sacred Deer with Colin Farrell and Nicole Kidman. Mm. Solid mm. flick, man. Very disturbing. <laughs> never, never even heard of it. Yeah, it was uh, very good. Same director who directed a movie called Lobster. Have you heard of that movie? I have heard of that one. Okay. He directed Lobster and both Colin Farrell and Nicole Kidman, I believe, were in Lobster together, but they were also in a movie called The Beguiled, which I've yet to see, but I heard great things about it. It's also a woman on the plane next to me back from Seattle recently. Mm-hmm. I was watching it. I tried not, you know, whenever you're on a plane and people are watching movies, you kind of like sort of watch their movies as well because they're just surrounded by screens. Like I watched uh, uh, most, I, th- I think I've seen Wonder Woman like 12 times <laughs> being on planes because everyone's always watching Wonder Woman because I've seen it uh, tw- once myself in the theater, but I've watched it from start to finish without sound maybe three times on a plane. So I'm like very familiar with that movie. But uh, same thing with Beguiled. I caught a couple scenes. I'm like, that looks very interesting. So I want to see that as well. But Killing the Sacred Deer, I highly recommend it. It's a very psychological type thriller slash horror movie. Okay. Uh, very unique and a very satisfying conclusion to that movie as well. Amazing performances too. Colin Farrell uses his natural accent in the movie as well. Mm. Colin Farrell. He talks like that way the whole movie and I just couldn't get it out of my head after I saw it. Mm. Good movie. I recommend it. Nikolai Fogg says for the conclusive uh, question here. I'm not sure, but most likely a specific question for Preston. What order would you rank the Dishonored games from worst to best? Not best to worst. And if it's easier, do best to worst, but I would do best to worst. Yeah. Uh, Dishonored, Dishonored 2, and Dishonored Death of the Outsider. I'll do best to worst. Okay. 2, 1, Death of the Outsider. Got it. Not to say that Death of the Outsider isn't good, because it's really, really good. Mm-hmm. I still need to play it. I really want yeah. to. But it's shorter and has less powers, and the story is not as good as the other two. Cool. Still a solid game, right. though. Preston, here's a curveball for you. Where does Thief rank on that list? Uh, Far beyond the. I wouldn't all even insult Thief by saying Dishonor next mm-hmm. to its name. Good man. Even though I just Good man. did. I apologize. <laughs> Holding out for that Thief sequel. I'll tell you that much. Oh, yeah. You want to be like the 10th sequel in that series? How many are there? it would be like the f- fifth one, I think. Okay. I believe there's a trilogy. And it'll inevitably be the best one when it comes out. Thief. Probably. Ten, ten of Thieves. You guys can trust if a new Thief is ever released that it will be a major event for this YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, will that do it, gentlemen? I think that'll do it. Excellent. That was the It's Obvious Gaming Podcast. Thanks for dropping by, guys. Uh, please check us out at YouTube.com slash It's Obvious Gaming. Please come subscribe. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers. Yes, yes. absolutely. That's our please goal for that. the end of the year. If you're listening to us on Spotify or iTunes, please come to youtube youtube.com slash it's obvious gaming and if you're just on youtube.com slash it's obvious gaming go to itunes leave us a nice review uh subscribe to us on any other platform at which you can subscribe to people that talk and let's play a ton of video games together especially going into the holiday season my christmas break although i will be working plenty over the break i won't be in school mid-november through the end of the year so i have a ton of time extra time to play games you guys want to play star wars call of duty uh what's something else that's out that's multiplayer uh uh, uh, PUBG. uh, uh yeah. other things let's team up and play some games i'd destiny. love to De- yeah overwatch guys overwatch too what happened to destiny the last time i was here i feel like everybody liked destiny i'm very interested to see what the vibe is like at bungie when i go back there yeah i'm I'm just i'm getting tired of it mm. that's my stance how, i'm tired of being how disappointed. heartbreaking jacob when you were stoked see, this is the it came this out. is the same thing as the original destiny i'd play it i do all the content i just wait for the next yeah. content drop i was, I was just supposed to more. is everybody supposed to be playing it right now I wanted something to replace WoW. I've always no. Had. See, then I think you went in with too high yeah, expectations. I, I, I knew yeah. that. Just like with No Man's Sky, man, you're killing everything for yourself. <laughs> Fuck No Man's Sky. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, anything? Oh yeah, if you're also our description down below, pretty much has everything you could ever want to know about us. Literally, <laughs> gamer tags for Xbox. Blood type. Blood type. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. <height. laughs> so Address. everything's in there absolutely yeah come address is down below come mm-hmm. some say hello phone else. numbers emails yeah. i'm All still giving stuff. out candy if you miss halloween <laughs> Don't come see me. just drop by real quick anyways guys it's been an absolute pleasure i look forward to talking with you guys next week as well absolutely and go dogs yes good wags i've been confined to just looking at highlights and stats for every game i've been working every single game mm-hmm. our next game starts mm-hmm. in about 30 minutes so if we've lost for some insane reason i probably won't be here for the next podcast because i will have jumped off a cliff okay (laughs) but uh, anyways hopefully that doesn't happen and i see y'all next week absolutely yes goodbye